All right. This is the same letter that we've read. We times. will begin our meeting at four o'clock for May 16th, 2023. Um, roll call vote, please. Trustee Anderson. Here. Trustee Crane. Here. Trustee Wigand. Here. Trustee Pearson. Here. Trustee Murphy. Trustee Ursoilu. Trustee Bartow. Here. Dr. Smith. Here. Thank you. And adoption of the minutes, uh, adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Trustee Wigan, seconded by Trustee Crane. Roll call vote. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Crane? Yes. Trustee Wigan? Yes. Trustee Pearson? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Trustee Ursoilu? Trustee Bartow? Yes. Do we have any community input? Yeah. No. No? Okay. Um, we will move to closed session. The items we are reviewing are 4A, confidential student matter, one case. 4B, conference with legal counsel, potential litigation, one case. 4C, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, one case. 4D, conference with labor negotiator. 4E, public employee discipline, dismissal, release, employment. 4E and G, empl public employee, discipline, dismissal, release, employment, number 202303HR and 202304HR. And 4H, update on student discipline, one case. We will return to open session at 6 p.m. Thank you. It is 6.02, we are coming back from our closed session earlier, and we have the following four readouts. From um, 4B, it, the vote was seven yeses, zero noes, zero abstain, zero absent. For 4E, the vote was seven ayes, zero noes, zero abstain, zero absent. For item 4F, the vote was seven yeses, uh, zero noes, zero abstains, zero absent. And item 4G, the vote was seven O. Oh. And now we will do our opening ceremonies and moment of reflection led by T.G. Rokos. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next up is the adoption of the minutes from April 18th, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Trustee Wigand, seconded by Trustee Crane. Roll call vote. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Crane? Yes. Trustee Wigand? Yes. Trustee Pearson? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Ursulu? Yes. Trustee Bartow? Yes. Okay, next up we'll have our recognition of our nat uh, National Board certif Certified Teacher, Katherine Holtz from Cloud Campus. That was for me, right? <laughs> but it is for Katie. Katie, can you come on up here? Sure. There she is. <laughs> this is who you want to cheer for. So good evening, President Anderson, Superintendent Smith, Board of Education, my co wonderful colleagues, and our fabulous guests. It's such a pleasure to be here tonight to introduce um, the most recent teacher that we have had to receive her national board certification. And I, I just want everyone to know that receiving your national board of education is extremely special. It is very difficult to receive um, and as well as to maintain. It's probably one of the highest honors that you can receive as a teacher, and they have to work for it. In fact, only 1% of our teachers in our district um, have this honor, and actually only 6% within the entire state. So you can see how, how unique it is. And to give you a little bit of background, the mission of the National Board is to advance the quality of teaching and learning and the foundation is national board certification is based on national standards 
and six prepositions. Teachers are committed to students and their learning. They know sub the subjects they teach and how to teach those subjects to students. They're responsible for, for managing and monitoring student learning. They think systematically about their practice and learn from experience. And I'm just going to repeat that one. They think systematically about their practice and learn from experience. And they are members of learning communities. They, Katie, in her journey, has and other candidates have to complete four components. They must demonstrate content knowledge. And for Katie, that is mathematics, which is very special. And then completing a portfolio of differentiation in instruction, teaching practice and learning environment, and effective and reflective practitioner. And so she has created a wonderful portfolio. And so tonight it's, it's with great pleasure that we recognize Katie, who has earned her National Board Certification in Mathematics in Early Adolescence. Did I get that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she's been working really hard. She's been with us for 11 years within our district. She actually started as a substitute, but she's so talented. Um, it was a very short period of time before someone, they picked her up at Davis, um, and that was a short period of time before then she moved on to Corona Del Mar, where she was since 2013, and then when Cloud Campus opened, uh, they were fortunate enough to have her involved with that team to enhance student learning, and next year she will be joining the Ensign family. So very, very excited. So very highly respected and involved. And this is just another accomplishment for you to be very, very proud of, Katie. Thank so you. So we honor you. And next up, we have our recognition of the 2022-23 Teacher of the Year recipients. Ms. Olson? And actually, it's and my pleasure. Oh, it yeah, it's my pleasure oh. to introduce Ron, uh, NMFT President Rhonda Reed, who will be acknowledging and, and introducing our Teachers of the Year. Wonderful. Good evening, President Anderson, trustees, um, Superintendent Dr. Smith, cabinet, and guests here tonight. It is such an honor to recognize the 2023 Teacher of the Year finalists this evening. Our top three finalists were announced at the Te Teacher of the Year Awards dinner last week, where we celebrated the best of the best educators who have outstanding passion um, for teaching and learning, who are truly extraordinary teachers, who are also kind and generous human beings. Our three finalists who have the opportunity to move on to the County Teacher of the Year application process, and I didn't see her tonight, uh, Jen Yenny from, from CDM. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Jennifer Puritan from Woodland is also one of our finalists. Thank you. And Michael Waldinger from Ensign Intermediate. Next up, we have our recognition of Newport Mesa Unified School District's 2023 Classified School Employee of the Year recipients. Stu Tedford? Or is, oh, Christine, Kristen Carter. Come on. 
full house tonight. Mm -hmm. President Anderson and members of the Board of Education and Dr. Smith, tonight we are recognizing two employees as part of the California Classified School Employee of the Year program. The overall purpose of the program is to identify and honor exemplary classified employees. Newport Mesa's classified employees are vital members of our school community and play key roles in creating a positive school environment that helps promote student achievement and well-being. This evening, I'm pleased to assist the board along with personnel commissioners Susan Meyer, Tristan Ailey, and Charlene Matoya in honoring our 2023 Newport Mesa Classified Employees of the Year. So our first person is known as the heart and soul of Ray Elementary. This Classified School Employee of the Year is a model of kindness and respect a nurturing and trusted presence for students and their families who links the campus and home experiences of our students while improving mental and physical health outcomes and academic success. With extensive knowledge of policies and procedures of the health office that have proven instrumental in her developing effective and efficient routines, she maintains impeccable health records and communication logs skillfully tracks absences to aid teachers, and is a leader in a campus emergency preparedness efforts. Critically, though, she connects with students by making it a priority to learn favorite stories and characters, names of pets, family traditions, and more, and has a magical way of building confidence, motivation, in students. She's trusted and held in high esteem by student staff and parents, this remarkable health assistant has become a crucial resource for the entire Ray community. Congratulations to health assistant Patricia Van Sickler. From top to bottom, the staff and students at Davis Magnet School recognize and greatly appreciate this Classified School Employee of the Year, who ensures that the campus's physical appearance and operations mirror its high quality instruction. Combining integrity, attention to detail, pride in work, and respect for all, and exceptional listening skills, this head custodian excels in all aspects of his position and far beyond the day-to-day -day cleaning and organizing obligations. He serves as a valid role model for students with an approach, appro well, excuse me, approachable and responsive manner, has established trusted relationships with staff with his observant and anticipatory actions and successfully builds and maintains the morale of his custodial team through his positive and thoughtful leadership. From classroom setup to meeting preparation to weather-related alternatives, his collaborative style and attentive manner allows the entire campus to operate more productively and harmlessly. Congratulations to head custodian Marco Sharino. I just want to close by thanking the Board of Education, Dr. Smith, and of course our personnel commissioners for always supporting and having a commitment to recognizing our exemplary classified employees. Thank you. Thank you. And next up we have our recognition of our Secondary Education Student Award winners. Ms. Torres. 
Yes, thank you. It is our pleasure this evening to celebrate so many of our wonderful secondary students. And so I'd like to introduce Dr. Mike Shaka, who is going to uh, then introduce um, Mr. Carmona, because we have lots of winners tonight. And when we invite our students up, if we could also have the principals come up if they are present tonight for a photo op, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, it is recognition night, so it's a lot of fun. President Anderson, members of the board, Dr. Smith, executive cabinet, and all of our guests. Each year, Orange County Register recognizes five people across the county as Orange County Artists of the Year. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Alexandra Hernandez. Alexandra, if you can come up here. <laughs> Alexandra is from Costa Mesa High School, and she won the OC Artist of the Year for Fine Arts. This is a huge accomplishment. She beat out hundreds of students throughout Orange County to receive this honor. We're extremely proud of Alexandra and eager to watch her continue to pursue her passion in art. Congratulations. And now Keith Carmona will continue the celebrations with some of our Abbott standouts. Good evening, President Anderson, trustees, Superintendent Smith, and Executive Cabinet. Tonight, we are celebrating the accomplishments of some incredible students in our middle and high school AVID programs. AVID is a college readiness program at seven of our secondary campuses that we'll be sharing a lot more about with you later this evening. AVID seeks to provide students with essential academic skills for them to be college and career ready upon high school graduation. Our AVID programs help students set high academic goals for themselves and then provide a pathway to achieve those goals. Each year, in a partnership between the Orange County Department of Education and the Angels Baseball Foundation, all Orange County secondary AVID schools are provided an opportunity to select their most outstanding student of the year to be celebrated at a ceremony. The AVID eighth grade standout students were honored at a ceremony at the Diamond Club and on the infield of Angel Stadium earlier this month. The students' pictures were shown on the big screen, a bio of their wonderful accomplishments was read, and they received a laptop computer down on the field, all while being cheered by family, friends, and school staff. The eighth graders, I'll name in just a minute, have demonstrated perseverance, diligence, and dedication. We are proud to celebrate Zachary Gervasio from Costa Mesa Middle School. Ashlyn Spicer from Ensign Intermediate. And Aislinn Avalos from T. Winkle Middle School. <laughs> Looks like she wasn't able to make it. Similarly, OCDE and the Angels Baseball celebrate the hard work and dedication of outstanding seniors in the AVID program at a beautiful ceremony at the Barclay Theater at UC Irvine. Our AVID standout seniors are, from early college, Sarita Plata.
<laughs> From Estancia High School, Jose Corona. And from Newport Harbor High School, Christian Reyes. Please join me in congratulating these seniors. Finally, as a part of the ceremony at UCI, the Angels Baseball Foundation has a program that provides college scholarships for seniors around the county. These scholarships are unique in that Angels Baseball evaluates the students' hard work and accomplishments and then ensures that selected students attend college at no cost. The Angels will provide scholarships that cover the balance of their tuition and other costs that aren't already covered by other grants and scholarships. Ostensibly, these students are now receiving full rides to their schools of choice. Wow. As we invite these students up to receive their recognition, I invite them to share with you the college they will be attending. From Early College High School, Alice Castellanos. Hi, my name is Alice Castellanos and I'm going to UCLA. Also from Early College, Eileen Jimenez. I will be attending UC Santa Cruz. Also from Early College, you met her earlier, Sarita Plata. I will be attending Harvard. Also from Early College, Gabriel Quesada. I'll be attending UCLA. Also receiving this honor are Jose Corona and Christian Reyes who weren't able to be here this evening, but congratulations to all of these students. Thank you. Thank you. And I know Jose Corona couldn't be here, but he got into Berkeley and UCSD, and he has chosen to go to UCSD. So we thank Jose. Um, next up uh, is the recognition of the 2023 Superintendent Character Trait Award honorees, Dr. Smith. So when people ask me what's right with Newport Mesa Unified, you just saw what's right with Newport Mesa Unified. These amazing students and their classmates that they represent, um, they're absolutely right. Uh, and by the way, let me also thank the parents and guardians. Uh, this doesn't happen by accident. We thank you for raising these inspiring young people. Uh, to the teachers, to the classified staff, for everyone that's helped them get to where they are today, and the dreams they'll get to realize, thank you for everything you've done. Now I get to recognize some more. I get to recognize graduating seniors, one from every high school that is a pillar of one of our character awards. Uh, the character awards we recognize are caring, citizenship, courage, fairness, respect, responsibility, and trustworthiness. These stories that we hear about these students, once again, uh, absolutely inspiring. In fact, one of the students, uh, a staff member said to me, I would trust this person with my children. I would even trust them with my checkbook. <laughs> and it struck me, who has a checkbook anymore, right? And also, you're gonna go with your kids first before your bank account? 
Either way, the story is these kids are pillars of character. I'm going to ask the principals to come up and help me with this. And so first off, let's have Principal Halt come up so we can recognize the character awardee for caring, Ellie Gowen. <laughs> Dr. Smith, uh, board, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Ellie. Ellie has been rep selected to represent uh, the, the pillar of caring. Um, Ellie has been involved in everything that she does at our school and continues to show what caring really looks like in different aspects of student leadership. She's currently the ASB vice president, where she's worked hard to make sure that all the events that go on at Estancia are inclusive and enjoyable by everyone, showing that inclusivity is a form of caring. She's been a model link crew leader where she mentors freshmen to ensure that they understand how to get by in high school, what it takes to be a successful eagle, and what it means to be a true student. She shows them caring every day by working as a mentor each day with 30 uh, um, uh, students that she mentors. Ellie's also been a standout athlete at Estancia, uh, and it's nice to know that somebody can really have sharp competitive instincts balanced by that sense of caring. Caring might not be the way a lot of her competitors viewed her, uh, <laughs> but she's represented our school well. Uh, she's been the uh, varsity team captain. She's been selected to represent the Orange County League, uh, and she's also been uh, selected to the L County Dream Team. Uh, after leaving Estancia, she's going to go on and uh, attend UCLA and major in applied mathematics. Yes. UCLA is having a Now I'd like to have Principal Haley come up and help me with the Citizenship Awardee, Luca Fasulo. Yes, good evening, uh, President Anderson, members of the board, Dr. Smith, Executive Cabinet. It's my pleasure to be here tonight. I'll echo your comments. Uh, this time of year is just such a special time as we reflect on the students, not only in our school, but throughout the district. Uh, it's just so fun to hear their accomplishments, and you're exactly right. It is a true representative of the work that we do each and every day. And part of that work is next to me. I've gotten to know uh, Luca Fasulo this year, and uh, more than anything, I learned about him really in the daily pilot. And sometimes you think, oh, geez, like what, what, what is that going to mean? Well, Luca was our representative uh, for Boys Nation after attending Boys State uh, for Corona Del Mar High School as a junior and got selected to go to Washington, D.C. And so reading about Luca and then meeting him this summer, uh, you can tell right away that he indeed represents everything we want to see, not only in our uh, school community, but the community at large. He cares. He cares about other people's points of view. He wants to make sure they're inclusive. Uh, any any, any possible outcomes that we could try to drive for positive change, he will see. Just recently in ASB class, and he's been a part of ASB for every single year he's been at Corona Del Mar, we were having a really healthy debate about some changes we're making in our student handbook. Um, and I just watched him as we uh, kind of were having the conversation with the other 31 students in the room, really start to kind of synthesize kind of some of those viewpoints to make sure that everybody felt that they were heard, they were appreciated, and they were valued in that conversation. And we got to a really, really good outcome at the end. Really, really happy as a Washingtonian that just like uh, TJ uh, Rokos right there, uh, we also, Luca will be attending the University of Washington uh, this fall. Go Huskies. Uh, he's, he's a uh, marvelous representative of our school and he's exactly what we want in our community. And so just make sure after you go to the beautiful state of Washington, please come back and, and help us here. So Luca Fasulo. <laughs> did try to get me in trouble this weekend, though. I have to be honest and share the story. We had a section championship game where both of our teams were in the southern section championship. So we all decided we had to sit in a neutral area, which is hard to find in a gymnasium. So we went to the press table, right? 
sitting at the press table, Luca came up to me and said, I'm glad you picked the right team. And I said, hey, man, I'm at the press table. He said, but it's closer to our sidelines. <laughs> so all of our hard work did necessarily pay off with him. Now the awardee for courage, I'd like to have uh, Principal Bauermeister come up and help me with Davian Gonzalez. Good evening, President Anderson, members of the board, Dr. Smith, executive cabinet, and distinguished guests. It is with great pride and pleasure that I bring Devin, Devin Gonzalez to you tonight as the superintendent's recipient for courage. Devin has certainly used Back Bay High School to its fullest to create a plan for his future. Davian once described himself as a failure in the education system because of his grades and spotty attendance. But in the past two years, he's shown the courage to ignore the stereotypes that come with poor grades and unlocking his unlimited potential. He is now considered a role model and mentor for other students. Finding a way to create your own success is what courage is all about, and Davian is the best example of that at Back Bay. Through his involvement in the Back Bay Spider Lab program, he has earned multiple career advancing certifications and now helps his fellow students and teachers acquire valuable skills. <laughs> Davian also participated in the school's new mentorship program, building his skill set uh, from industry professionals in real estate, construction, and entrepreneurial fields. And two of them are here tonight. He has taken ownership of his education and career goals. When he came to Back Bay, he was intent on dropping out so he could financially support his family but instead made it his personal goal to succeed in education, and he has done just that, as teacher Jason Kovacs said. Earlier this year, Davion attended an evening presentation on financial aid, leaving with the determination to apply for scholarships. He will attend Orange Coast College in the fall and plans to major in business. And we look forward to seeing what happens in Davion's future, because we know he's ready. <laughs> Now, Principal Martinez could come up and help me with the awardee for fairness, Alice Castellanos. Good evening, President Anderson, Board Trustees, Dr. Smith, Executive Cabinet guests. I'm going to stick with what I have here. You're going to have to start that clock on me if I go <laughs> off. Uh, though Alize Castellanos' early years in life were anything but fair, one would not know it based on her fair, kind, and positive attitude. She does not complain of hardships or make excuses. And that is especially true when it comes to her education and her relationships with her peers. Alizé has pushed forward to create a bright future as home life was not always stable. Fortunately, her aunt and uncle, who are here tonight, took Alizé and her sister Amelie in not too long ago. Yet she never missed a beat with her resilience and determination. During classroom debates and discussions, Alizé searches for the truth and ensures that all her peers have an opportunity to be heard. She listens to and considers all points of view to achieve a balanced perspective among her peers and those with differing views. Her reasoning and analysis is consistently fair and kind to all people and groups, and she demonstrates a sense of civic duty and responsibility. Since Alizé did not always have positive memories with law enforcement who had to intervene in her young life, she took it upon herself to understand what officers experience day in and day out by joining the Newport Beach Police Department's Explorers Program, where she has committed over 350 hours of service. These are Alizé's words. My dream is to fulfill my calling to help people to become a doctor. I'm going to show other Latina girls that there is a place for us in the medical field, despite currently making up such a minority of physicians. 
The pain I have experienced in the past has become my purpose and will feel the impact I'm going to make in the future. When she graduates on June 1st, she will have earned not only a high school diploma, but also associate degrees in math and science, plus arts and humanities. Wow. Alizé <laughs> intends to start her next journey at UCLA, majoring in cognitive neuroscience. She has the right mindset, where I don't have any doubt one day I'll be calling her Dr. Alizé Castellanos. <laughs> Alizé Castellanos. Bolton can come up and help me with our awardee for respect, Shay Wood. President Anderson, members of the board, Dr. Smith, executive cabinet, and distinguished guests, thank you for recognizing Shay Wood for respect. It's one of the pillars at Newport Harbor High School. It's one of the most cherished values that we have. Invariably, a student has 24 to 28 teachers in their four years at Newport Harbor. Every single one of Shay's teachers recommended her for the Superintendent of Character Award, and they just said that she was the most respectful person that they have ever met. It's an overused term sometimes, but she exudes it, embodies it, and lives it every day. Accepts people for who they are, doesn't judge, is very soft-spoken, but tenacious at her academic work and also sailing. She's a sailor sailor. She'll, <laughs> she'll be, she, in fact, she'll be sailing at Stanford University in the fall, where she'll be attending. And I think that the biggest compliment that, that she could receive is from her own peers, who when they found out that she got this award, applauded the fact that we had chosen her for this award and her picture's going to hang. Again, representing the entire student body at Newport Harbor High School. She's a full IB diploma recipient. She'll get her full IB diploma this spring at Newport Harbor, and she's off and away. And I'll be working for her in a couple of years after she graduates from Stanford, as we all will. But she'll change the world because of her heart, her soul, her mind, and the beautiful acceptance that she has for everybody in this world. Shea Wood. <laughs> Principal Stevens can help me with our awardee for responsibility, Lauren James. Good evening, Dr. Smith, President Anderson, members of the board, and executive cabinet. Uh, before I start, I want to let you know that Lauren was one of the original students at Cloud Campus and has been with us the entire three years of our school. So we're really happy to recognize her tonight because she has accomplished on so many levels. She has consistently demonstrated responsibility through her ethic and respectful attitude. She takes care of family members and takes an active role in her family and tutoring other students, including elementary students at California School in NMUSD. She attends Korean class two hours a week and spends her free time tutoring younger students, and she plans to spend time in college abroad in Korea teaching English. So Lauren is also a classically trained singer. You may have heard her at some of the events in the past, including graduations at um, performance at Tewinkle, California, Estancia, the State of the District Breakfast, Costa Mesa City Council, and many more. And you'll have another opportunity at the Cloud Campus graduation that's coming up real soon. Her English teacher, Mrs. Arrow, comments that Lauren cares deeply about the world, and one of her greatest accomplishments in life will be leaving it a better place. Her mind is full of insight and possibility. Her heart is full of respect and empathy for all. Lauren has always shared that she hopes to be part of a nonprofit uh, group acting as an advocate for the voiceless and underprivileged. She values humanity and will rise to the occasion for anyone in need. For instance, in response to her senior project, Lauren presented information on mental health awareness to all of our Zoom classes at Cloud Campus. Mm -hmm. Lauren has been accepted to the University of California, San Diego, the University of Minnesota, 
University of North Carolina at Greensboro, University of Hawaii in Manawa, and is excited to major in sociology with a career goal in social work. Lauren would also like to travel abroad in her college years. Congratulations, Lauren. And finally, if Principal Potness could help me award our final award winner for trustworthiness, Tiana Long. President Anderson, members of the board, Superintendent Smith, executive cabinet, and guests. Tiana Luong was one of the first students that I had the opportunity to meet when I started at Costa Mesa High School. She stood out as a student who is compassionate introspective and trustworthy. Over the year, I have observed her being a connector and creating an inclusive campus for all students. She celebrates others' accomplishments and make the, makes those around her feel special. I have observed her make thoughtful decisions, keeping in mind the feelings of others. When asking for input from the staff on who should be considered for Character Traits Award, Tiana received the most nominations with members of the staff sharing that they would trust her with her kids, their kids, and trust her with their life. <laughs> Being honest, I understand why. What I haven't shared with her or really anyone is this. During our Spread the Love Week, students in ASB wrote letters to members of the staff, spreading kindness and gratitude. Tiana wrote a letter to me, which is hanging in my office. It's not just the fact that she wrote the letter, but the heartfelt words that left me taking a picture of it and sending it to my family. I wish they thought I was as special as Tiana is. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. <laughs> um, she is the type of student that will lend a helping hand. She's the type of student that will ask you, how are you really doing? Because she reads people so well. She's the type of student that makes you believe that you can when you are not sure. Tiana Luang is an exceptional Mustang, and we are so proud to celebrate her. Tiana. <laughs> Those are my favorite awards. <laughs> um, next up are student board member reports. Trustee Crane. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Tonight's topic is in the spirit of the Superintendent Character Traits Award. If you were to present a character trait award to one specific adult individual on at your campus, should, should we wait until? Let's, let's recess for about a, not recess, but pause for a minute. We're going to take a one minute break while our students and our families are able to leave.
Okay, we will resume. All right, thank you, President Anderson. In the spirit of the Su Superintendent's Character Traits Award, if you were to present a Character Trait Award to one specific adult individual at your campus, who would it be and which one of the seven award traits would you bestow upon this individual and why? And the seven, again, were caring, citizenship, courage, fairness, respect, responsibility, and trustworthiness. And then if you also can share two campus highlights. Uh, tonight we have on the dais T.J. Rocos from Corona Del Mar High School, and we have Ethan Kraus from Cloud Campus, Marcy Cope, and Moss Elliott from Back Bay High School, Monta Vista High. And T.J., won't we begin with you? Well, just when you thought the recognizing was over, uh, here we go again. So this week, as Mrs. Crane mentioned, we were asked to recognize an adult on campus who we were given an award to. Uh, for one of the seven uh, character traits the superintendent highlights at the end of every year. However, I happen to believe that in order to be a good man or woman, you have to have a little bit of all seven character traits. Caring, citizenship, courage, fairness, respect, responsibility, and trustworthiness. The man I am choosing to highlight, Michael Dobbins, encompasses all of these qualities in his life because he is one of the most well-rounded individuals I have ever met. As the activities director at CDM, he teaches a student government class. This means he constantly has a pulse on what is happening within the student body. More impressively, he is able to get along and connect with all 50 of our diverse students in the student government class. He can have a conversation with me and the boys and then get along equally as well with the girls. From football to dance to theater, he knows how to hold a conversation about it, and if he can't, he's willing to learn and listen. I first met Mr. Dobbins as a nervous sixth grader walking into my middle school ASB interview. That day he gave me his vote of confidence and I've served with him for six straight years since. I have grown as a man since meeting him, but I have not grown without him. Aside from my parents, he has been a, one of the most important role models in my life. They say everyone has, a, has that one teacher that they will remember uh, that truly made their experience in school special. I was fortunate enough to have that teacher every year I was at CDM. Dobbins, I'm a better man because of you. To the superintendent and members of the board, the stipend that is given to activities directors <laughs> is not enough for the work that they do. <laughs> it's possible that no amount would be enough to compensate them for the amount of students they impact and lead. To all activities directors, thank you for staying with us until midnight setting up for the rallies. Thank you for always answering the phone and thank you for your service. I'll keep my campus highlights short and sweet. My first highlight should be a celebration for the entire district um, because we had two NMUSD schools competing for the CIF Volleyball Championship on Saturday. Unfortunately, the school from the other side of the bay that we don't talk about beat us. <laughs> but the dedication that all these boys put in to get there stems from a school district committed to their success in sports and school. And uh, we'll get him in football again. I think that would be 11 years, Mr. Bolton. I don't know if he's probably left. <laughs> Finally, we have prom this Saturday at Soak University with an under the sea theme. Parents, if your son or daughter is lucky enough to attend CDM, or even luckier that they're dating someone from CDM, please buy the tickets <laughs> by, by this Thursday to attend. At CDM High School, students will be voting on one prom king and one prom queen this week at school, and a senior boy will be announced as king and a senior girl as queen at the dance about halfway through before everyone leaves. So thank you always for the opportunity to speak. God bless you, and thank you. Ethan Kraus, Cloud Campus. If I was to give a character trait award to someone at my school, it would have to be my teacher, Mrs. Kroger. The award would be for caring. I have had her as my science teacher for the past three years now. My sophomore year, she was my chemistry teacher. My junior year, she was my AP environmental and AP chem teacher. Oh, sorry, in this year, she was my AP environmental and AP chem teacher. I would give her the caring award because she always checks in with me to see how I'm doing at the beginning of each class. In addition, she always checks to make sure I understand a concept before moving on to a topic. She's an amazing teacher, and I'm so glad that I've had her these past three years. For Cloud Campus highlights, on Monday, May 22nd, for secondary school, we'll be having a virtual open house. On Wednesday, 
May 24th, the elementary school will be having its open house. Then on June 6th, elementary students will be having a year yearbook signing celebration. Thank you, Ethan. Marcy and Moss, come on up. Marcy. <laughs> Just me, I'm afraid. <laughs> that's, that's good, we'll, we'll take that. Good evening, Superintendent Smith, President Anderson, board members, cabinet, and community. The student board members were asked who on our school's campus we as students would present a character trait award to. I would choose one of our English teachers, Ms. Bryce Digman, with the character trait award of caring. She is one of the most caring people on campus. Whenever a, fellow, a student or fellow teacher needs help, she is there to support them in any way they need it. She makes sure that students understand everything. She teaches and is there to support them with any of their needs emotionally or academically. She is always energetic, energetic and enthusiastic. Uh, she brings endless positive energy to campus. And two campus highlights from this last month was our senior breakfast, which was a, su a success, and all of our graduating students got their photos taken, including me and Moss. <laughs> <laughs> and we also had our Cinco de Mayo celebration, which was a nice break for the students. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Marcy. Okay, next is our Harbor Council PTA report, Cynthia Strassman. Good evening, Superintendent, Dr. Smith, uh, President Anderson, trustees, cabinet, and guests. Good to be here. It's been a while since I've reported in person. Uh, we just have a few things to share on behalf of Harbor Council PTA. On May 8th, we had our Harbor Council Honorary Service Awards Luncheon. We, are, we were honoring our unit PTA parent volunteers and our council awardees, and we were so appreciative of the support that we received from the principals. Uh, the district, the trustees, our PTA presidents, and uh, the parent community. We had about 160 uh, in attendance that day. So it was a great showing. It was great to be back in person. It was economical. And <laughs> I received a lot of emails uh, from the attendees uh, stating that they felt honored. So thank you for that. Um, next, pleased to announce that Harbor Council PTA received two distinguished awards this year, one from 4th District PTA. Uh, we received the Outstanding Council PTA for our collaboration, our advocacy, our communication, and our leadership. In addition, we received an award from California State PTA for our leadership, um, just recognizing all the work that we do to help support our PTA units. Um, also would like to recognize and congratulate three uh, PTA units for their uh, many, many years of service at their school sites. You're gonna be wowed by this. Um, Ensign, 70 years. 70? 70. Um, Anderson, 60 years. And Palerino, 50 years. So um, pretty, pretty impressive that the PTA is still going strong after all these years. Um, as we end this school year, our current membership is, I'm going to have Andrew McGarry come up. She's our VP of membership to share the good news about membership. She just, oh, she just stepped out? Okay. <laughs> um, we'll circle back to that, but she had asked to uh, come and present that, so we'll give her just a couple minutes. Um, we're wrap, as we're wrapping up um, the end of the year, we are meeting our last meeting of the year is in June. We've invited all the newly elected PTA presidents to come, meet Harbor Council. Sometimes the new leadership kind of is kind of frightened to come to Harbor Council, not quite sure what we're all about, so we're, mm. we're there to introduce, greet them, welcome them, and help them make a smooth transition into their new leadership roles. Um, she come back in? Okay. Um, Lastly, I wanted to express on behalf of Harbor Council our gratitude uh, to our educators, to our school board members, to the district, uh, to the school staff, right, to our PTA leaders, our parent volunteers. We're working as the village, right? We're all working in concert to benefit our school communities and the kids, and it doesn't go unnoticed. We truly appreciate your partnership. We couldn't do it without your support, and um, we look forward to uh, our partnership next year. So I'm not going to say goodbye just yet, but I'll give just a couple minutes for Andrea. Is your daughter coming? How about we call if she comes back in? We'll yeah, call but her we back call. Up. Okay, I could share what she's going to share, but okay, I, I told awesome. I would give her um, a couple minutes to do that. So, or recap. Okay, well, we're going to come back up. Yeah. Okay. 
Unless, oh, there she oh. is. Okay. okay, this is Andrew McGarry. She's our Vice President of Membership. I was waiting for my prop, and he's writing. So Ms. Solden from Costa Mesa High School is going to be my messenger. Um, but as VP, as Harbor Council PTA membership, um, my goal this year was to increase by 3% district-wide. And I reached out to all the PTA presidents and encouraged them to do all that they could, whether that meant setting a table up at their open house or at a football game or going to the water polo games or at their trunk or treat and just sharing what PTAs actually do on their campuses. Um, I have my foot cut in, in different schools because I have kids at Davis, but then I also have kids at Coast Mesa Middle and High School. And I think for a lot of parents, they don't know what does PTA actually do. So I was encouraging all of our PTA presidents to share all the amazing things that you do on your campus. And so every month I would send them fun little activities. Um, try to get your principals to join. Try to get your staff to join. Make sure everybody on your PTA board has joined. Um, and just little things like that. Send me a picture of your board dressed up for Halloween or at your last board meeting. And I was trying to make it more inclusive and not my school versus your school mentality. I wanted us to be Newport Mesa mentality. And because of that, we have raised our percentage is at over 13% increase district-wide, which is around 900 more memberships. Wow. Um, one of the fun things that I was doing every single month was any time a school did something amazing, those little baby, sets of, baby steps of achievements I would ring a bell. <coughs> and I forgot my bell, but my husband just oh, pulled in. So <laughs> anyways, I've been the bell ringer for the last year. Um, so no matter what school that was, whether they had 23 memberships last year, and now they're at 32. And for a lot of schools that have four or 500 memberships, they don't think that's much of an accomplishment. But in my eyes, that was huge. It meant that they were improving on their own campus. They were spreading the good word of what PTA was doing. They were getting more staff involved. They were getting more parents involved. And so I would ring the bell for each and every single one of those schools. Please be. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Here it is. This is my favorite thing. Um, anyways, for every single school, all those little amazing, 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 amazing little um, achievements. They would get Skittles, but also I would ring the bell because I wanted them to feel proud of whatever those achievements were. And so anyways, I'm really, really proud as a VP over membership to, as of today, um, about, it was around 900 memberships, but it was a 13% increase. Uh, last year we were at 5555, and I think we're at 68, Something? 6,488. Yeah, six, wow. yeah, it's over 64, yeah. but we yeah. don't have May's numbers yet. So, but I'm really proud, and I'm coming back next year as membership. So, yeah. I hope to be ringing the bell next year to let you know that we've increased even more. So, for everybody here who has joined PTA, thank you. <laughs> if you did it, wait till fall, See me. and make sure you join the PTA. Thank July you. 1st. July 1st. July 1st. After July 1st. <laughs> Okay, next up are CSCA President Stu Tedford. Thank you, Board President Anderson, trustees, my buddy Wes Smith, <laughs> cabinet, and all of our esteemed guests. Um, the first thing I'd like to do real quick is to acknowledge our scholarship winners. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'll forget, because I don't normally prepare, and if I prepare it, I'll forget. <laughs> so, um, Kyra Johnson. Iyadi Ramirez, Idelene Ramirez, Lucas Woodruff, and Mark Vera each got $1,000 from mm -hmm. CSEA. <laughs> and the reason we do that is because we can't really directly reward our, uh, our uh, members for these kinds of things, but what we can do is support them in their quest for education for their kids, which is super important, and you all know that I put kids first all the time, so anytime I can help somebody 
you know, uh, um, do something really nice for their for their family. We'd like we like to do that. So, um, uh, one thing I would like to bring up is a, is a kind of a mixed uh, message thing. Is that the instructional aides? I'm still getting a lot of calls from them, but I can, I tell them that we're working on it as diligently as we can. I've shown the the uh, personnel commission reports about how many positions we have available for people to take, how many people are qualified. We have a lot of 100 percenters, so we have a lot of quality people that we can choose from. So we need to just um, find a way to get them in the door. And I know that we're going to do that together. Um, the LMI is coming up in a couple of weeks. We're super looking forward to that. I want to thank everybody for including us in that. It's been a very rewarding um, marriage, I'd say, between the people that come and uh, the people who participate fully. Sometimes it's hard to get people off of their butt to, you know, to, to understand the value of these things. But at the same time, um, when you can reach out to somebody who's in a position to help you and you can do the same because you <coughs> develop those relationships and you've heard me talk about it many, many times about relationships, um, it's important to us and we really, really value it and thank you very much for all the consideration you give us. And now, my favorite part, is ACE Day. <laughs> and I want to thank every one of you who's participating. It's going to be a wonderful program. My folks are super excited. I'm super excited. You're going to be busy. <laughs> busy. Bring your work clothes. I got my boots on. You may no. want to also. Uh, I hear we got a lot of interesting things for folks to do. But again, what it's about is it's about team building and relationships. And that's what we do best here at Newport Mesa. And I want to thank all of you for your dedication to the kids and your uh, consideration and kindness to us and especially your leadership, because that's what I value most. Thank you. Okay. Next, NMFT President Rhonda Reed. Oh, Sandy Gordon. Good evening, President Anderson, trustees, Superintendent Smith, and cabinet, um, and guests tonight. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say um, congrats to our certificated and classified and all those absolutely wonderful students recognized here tonight. Um, everybody has done such an amazing job. I'm Sandy Gordon. I'm first vice president, and I'm honored to share with you tonight NMFT's uh, update for this evening. Um, this past month, um, I, alongside uh, our union president, Rhonda Reed, joined California Federation of Teachers in Sacramento to meet uh, with state legislators and advocates for our priority for education in the Capitol. All of uh, our presence in the halls in the legislature uh, gives a human face to our collective fight for high quality <sighs> education. One of our top priorities, AB 938, increases certificated and classified educators and professionals' wages to enable them to have a long and successful career dedicated to their students. While we were in Sacramento, the bill passed um, out of the Education Committee without any no votes and with bipartisan support. So we were very happy to that, and it was a very, very exciting day. On another note, um, as many of you know, this is my last year with the district. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my involvement with NMFT uh, and my involvement with NMFT at this level. I wanted to express my gratitude to all those I have had the pleasure of working with and knowing during my career. Uh, we, I, we truly have the best of the best in our district. Being on the executive board of our union as, uh, has been both challenging and rewarding, and sometimes all in the same situation. <laughs> um, I've especially enjoyed the interaction with the district personnel through our negotiations, our LMI training, and our superintendent meetings. I feel our union uh, and its leadership are very, very strong, 
and will continue to be strong with the candidates that are currently running for office and the involvement we have from our certificated employees. I look forward to volunteering and continuing uh, to support the district and our union in any way that I can. Thank you for a wonderful career. Thank you very much, Sandy, for all of your years at Victoria. Next, we will move on to 14 community input on non-agendized items. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board regarding items on the regular meeting agenda. Comments on non-agenda items, topics are limited to three minutes per comment up to 20 minutes per topic. And today we have a lot on um, class size. So those to get everyone in, because we want to hear everyone, we're gonna shorten those to two minutes each because we do wanna get everyone in. Um, a speaker may not relinquish his or her time to another person. By order of the Brown Act, section 54954.2, the board will take no action nor have any discussion on non-agendized items. The superintendent, the superintendent may provide clarification during superintendent's comments. Okay. First up, we will have Andrea Bird Steiner. And after that will be Corey Tippett. Hi there. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Andrea Bird Steiner and I am the mom of two students at Newport Heights Elementary. I'm here to urge you to add at least two teachers to class and classrooms to Newport Heights for the 2023 to 24 school year. My kids are in kinder and third grade right now at Newport Heights. Because of the COVID-19 crisis, the current third grade students at Heights did about a year of remote or hybrid learning between kindergarten and first grade. As reported last week on NPR, according to researchers at Harvard Center for Education Policy Research and Stanford's Educa Educational Opportunity Project, students fell behind during COVID in both math and reading. Students with long periods of remote or hybrid learning fell further behind. And these studies are showing that the students aren't catching up yet. The unusual circumstances of the COVID crisis puts a burden on our teachers to help our students play catch up. Each child had a different experience with remote and hybrid learning. Many fell behind academically and many fell behind socially and emotionally. We need to support these students and the best way to do this is by keeping our student teacher ratio down so that teachers have the ability to give our students individualized attention that meets our students individualized needs. If teachers have too many students, they can't do this. Right now at Newport Heights, there are three third grade classes, but only two fourth and two fifth grade classrooms. Large classes hurt our students' chances at catching up. The difference between around 20 to 22 students versus 27 to 30 students in a classroom is huge. A teacher only has a set amount of time to spend one-on-one -on -one with students, even in a small class. And in a large class, that time's reduced even further because if any disruption can cause a ripple effect. I'm asking the board to add at least two teachers in classrooms for the 2023 to 24 school year at Newport Heights so that all grades have at least three classrooms. We must support our teachers and students. Thank you. And after Corey will be Shalina Beesom. Good evening, Newport Mesa trustees and Superintendent Smith. My name's Corey Tippett. I have three sons, a third grader at Kaiser, a first grader at Woodland, and a soon-to-be TK student. I've come here tonight to share my concerns regarding projected class size increases at Kaiser Elementary. In my meeting with district representatives, I was heartened to hear them say that while we are a large district at 22 schools, we aren't so large that we can't take time to look at each school's individual needs. And that to me speaks to the heart of the matter. As a former high school teacher and administrator, I understand the need for standardized metrics and procedures. Without them, it would just be chaos. But I also know the power that comes from being able to see each student, class, and school as a unique and distinct entity that deserves consideration. I understand how the math works and why classes at other schools are smaller, partly due to the pause on split classes. That said, there's a clear inequity happening when some students are learning in classes with 23 students and other students are in classes with 29 and 30 students. Let me be clear, I don't want the, t the other classes to be brought up to target. I want fourth and fifth grade to be re-examined with a critical lens to see what is really best for these students. I continue to hear that the district is trying to bring our classes back up to the pre-COVID target of 28 to one. 
This is concerning as all of the academic research that has come out of the education space makes it clear. We're living in a post-COVID world and these students need to be treated as such. The social, emotional, and academic trauma these students have experienced is real. Our current third graders lost the first few years of their schooling and trying to get back to pre-COVID numbers without intense intervention is setting both teachers and students up to fail. I know you've read the same research as I have. Learning loss from COVID will take years to correct, and that is with intensive recovery strategies, not just returning to the status quo. Sending these kids back into larger classes with less one-on-one -on -one attention is simply nonsensical. Test scores will continue to suffer, and we will continue to lose kids to private schools. Thank you for your time. Thank you, and after Shalina, it will be John Joe. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Shalini Beesom. I'm a pediatrician in Huntington Beach, uh, but I live in Costa Mesa. I have a fourth grader at Kaiser Elementary. Um, she's about 29 kids in her class right now. Um, she explains to me on the daily that um, it's really hard for her to focus because of all the changes that are going on, and there's a lot harder for kids to kind of settle down, basically. So basically, she said it took her almost a whole year for them to, you know, calm everyone down, she said. Um, we had actually transferred to uh, the public school because we've had a lot of issues with lack of diversity in the private schools. So, you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to change that was to go to the public school and kind of experience that. But when I hear about the lack of, you know, funding for more teachers, more one-on-one, -on -one, it's kind of making me really kind of rethink what I want to do with my children's education. Um, as a physician and a pediatrician in the area, you know, on the daily I experience what COVID is affecting you know my children and you know my own patients as well too um you know usually these kids that i hear from or parents that i hear from you know they have a great support system but so i can't imagine you know not having that and you know once the funds start lacking and with the lack of extra support you know these teachers can you know just an extra five minutes can make a really huge difference and touch a child's life um you know, if a child that won't, if, you know, once there's more uh, availability for these teachers to, you know, have that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, they won't be coming to see me in my clinic because of depression, anxiety, you know, a lot of issues that have been just getting worse and worse as the days go by. Um, so I think we should really rethink our choices, you know, for what is more important for the future and not be so short-sighted. Yeah. Thank you. After John is Jennifer Mulmini, Mulmina. All right. Good evening, Superintendent Smith, President Anderson, trustees. I appreciate you taking the time tonight. My name is John Joe. I am a parent of two children at Newport Mesa Unified School District. Uh, my wife Tiffany is a member of the PTA a teacher at a neighboring school for the past 16 years. And I too help volunteer at the school with the school's foundation to help fundraise for the district as well. Um, we absolutely love, first and foremost, Newport Heights Elementary. We think it's an amazing school. We're here today because we want to continue to support that school. Um, we have a fifth grader who has lost, you know, he's, he's in fifth grade. Previous years, it's always been three teachers. This is the first year where they reduced the class, uh, the, reduced the teacher count. So it went from 22 students up to 30 students. Uh, at the time, we were told this was to make room for the sixth graders so they had all three teachers in their grade. Going forward, we're being told that the sixth grade year next year will also lose a teacher, so he'll have two years Well, there will be 30 to one as far as a student to teacher ratio. And we're just trying to communicate this to the board. We ask you for your support. Um, you know, we're, we're very concerned that this group of students is struggling academically. Um, they're, current, they're gonna carry their struggles into junior high and high school where we know for a fact that junior high comes with more academic rigor. And we just wanna set up our kids for, for, for all the support they can. We heard tonight where we saw previously where there's all these students who are being celebrated for the academics, and we want to support our kids as well. So we thank you for your time. Thank you. And after Jennifer will be Casey Carpenter. Good evening. I'd like to pass my time, please, because other parents are covering the same comments I wanted to make. Oh, we're not allowed to do that. If someone else would like to speak, they need to fill out their own card. Oh, they are. Yeah. They have. I just know that what I would like to share, I've already heard parents say, and I don't okay, want to waste time. Pass yes, okay, thank, thank you. you. Casey Carpenter and then Carrie Knight Teague. Okay. 
Carrie Knight Teague, and then following that, Kelly Newcomb. Good evening, Superintendent Smith, President Anderson, trustees and cabinet. I appreciate the time tonight. My name is Carrie Knight Teague, and I'm a parent who loves children in third and fifth grade next year at Kaiser Elementary. I'm also a school psychologist and professor, and it's difficult for me to remove that hat when I think about my kids' education. I'm here to support Kaiser's outstanding teachers and excellent administration, first and foremost, and speak about projected class sizes at Kaiser next year. I recognize that decisions have been made about Kaiser staffing are made in accordance with California Department of Education's maximums for grades three through six and class considerations across other Newport Mesa schools. I ask though that considerations are made first and foremost about the best interests of our students. I also implore you to consider the potential impact this could have on Kaiser's and therefore Newport Mesa's overall enrollment trends in the future. Research on the relationship between class size and student outcomes is impacted by many confounding variables. Things like teacher education, curriculum, the fidelity of implementation of that curriculum, the skills that kids come into classrooms with at the beginning of the year. So there's been issues with research on class size in the past, and I can speak about that as a professional. However, studies that do a good job of controlling for those confounding variables do find a relationship between class size and student outcomes, both academic and student well-being even in the upper grades. So much of the research focus has been on primary grades and that's reflected in the CDE guidelines for class size, but there is research evidence to support that class size impacts the outcomes of our upper elementary students as well. In a post school closure world, fewer students are meeting or exceeding ELA and math standards in SBAC testing. It's in the best interest of student teach students, Thank teachers. You, Am I done? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Kelly and then Wendy Paget, followed by Donald Miller. Okay, don't start it. Um, good evening, Newport Mesa trustees and Superintendent Smith. My name is Kelly Newcomb. My daughter is a fourth grader at Kaiser Elementary and happens to be the fourth generation of our family to attend the Newport Mesa School District. I come here tonight to talk to you about the class sizes at Kaiser and offer my strong support to keep all Kaiser teachers on staff. We support our entire staff and leadership at Kaiser. This is purely a class size issue. My daughter is one of the unique kids at Kaiser who has both an IEP and is a GATE student. Um, her unique learning disability paired with her advanced learning has made it difficult for her to reach her potential this year with a crowded class of 30 students. She comes home constantly sharing how hard it is to focus or get her questions answered in class when her classmates are disrupted, disruptive. I volunteer in her class once a week and know her classmates have IEPs, 504s, are English language learners, struggling academically, academic high achieving, while others have behavioral issues, need speech and counseling. With all the specific needs of each student and the highly studied post-COVID learning loss, there is no one teacher that can effectively meet the social, emotional and academic needs of 30 students in the, in the time allotted. I see the challenges of her, her teacher's face and the curriculum required, and I know the class will not be able to get through it all by the year's end. Teachers work hard to do their best, but the district is failing to support them with these large class sizes. This entire fourth grade will be faced with the same overcrowded issues going into fourth and uh, fifth and sixth grades, and it's unfair that they will not receive the same level of education and opportunities as others in our school and our district. After pulling families on my daughter's sports teams who are also in fourth grade in the Newport Mesa area, none of them have larger, classes larger than 22 students and all attend schools like Mariners, Killybrook, uh, uh, California, East Bluff. It's only our Kaiser kids that have 29 to 30 students, um, which these are her peers when we're gonna go to Ensign and Harbor and obviously this is gonna impact their overall success. I could have said more. <laughs>
Good evening, Newport Mesa trustees and Superintendent Smith. My name is Wendy Badgett, and I'm a Kaiser Elementary School parent. In the upcoming 2023-24 school year, I will have children in fourth and fifth grade, which are the most impacted grades at Kaiser. I have witnessed the disrupt disruptions and constant distractions in classrooms with these larger class sizes. I'm currently spending time in these larger class classes as both a parent volunteer and a substitute teacher. I have seen firsthand that it is difficult for students to learn, to concentrate, and perform at their best in these large classes. Additionally, I'm concerned with equity among classroom sizes within schools in our district. As a substitute teacher, um, I have been in different schools and various classrooms of the same grade where the numbers are significantly lower. Students in these smaller classes are able to su successfully move along through the curriculum with the support of their teacher. With classrooms operating at maxi maximum capacity, Kaiser students are not being offered the same equitable learning experiences that they deserve. Asking even our most experienced teachers to manage these overpopulated classes and meet the needs of many, the many students needing extra support throughout the day is unreasonable. The loss of Kaiser teachers and proposed higher class sizes simply does not set our students up for success. As a parent and an educator, I teach my students to do better than the minimum, to strive to go above and beyond a goal. I'm asking the board to do what's best for our students and not leave Kaiser or any school staff with just the minimum. Thank you for your time. Donald Miller? Hello, my name is Donald Miller. Uh, I have a fourth grader uh, at uh, Kaiser, a boy, and I have a seventh grade uh, girl at uh, Ensign who went through Kaiser, so I, I got to see you know the, the whole thing. And Kaiser's been great, Woodland was great. I have nothing but great things to say about these people. Um, but I'm a little bit taken aback that, uh, by the notion that uh, we're looking to get back to a ratio that was in place pre-pandemic. Uh, it seems to me like you know, maybe the pandemic is over as a national uh, or a world health uh, event, uh, but the impact that uh, these kids have suffered because of the disruption to the normal course of education is like just incredible. And like, I got to see the difference between my son who was in first and second grade and missing those opportunities to have the in-person instruction at that critical age versus my daughter. They both were negatively impacted, but my son and his cohort were like way, way impacted. So. It's just the notion of going back to the status quo ante is kind of nuts to me because we're still reeling from the effects of this. So that's gotta be taken into account. The last thing I'll say is, is like, I get it. We wanna be fair to the other schools. We can't set a ratio that's so low that it's physically impossible for certain schools to meet it because they don't have enough classrooms. Well, if that's the limitation, then I should really be advocating for more classrooms at those schools so that we can bring the ratio down and it's physically possible to meet a, a ratio that we would like to see at all the schools in our district. I think parents, you know, we're looking at our kids and our classrooms and our schools, but you guys, when you're talking about these ratios, this is a ratio for the whole district, you know, and you gotta look at all the schools. So if you gotta build more classrooms at Paul Arena so that they can, you know, theoretically uh, meet a ratio of 25 to one, then build classrooms at Paul Arena. Like whatever has to be done, let's do it. But let's not be holding ourselves to a ratio that's only ever gonna be as low as what our least equipped, most overburdened school can handle. Thank you, appreciate it. Next is Kathy Pinkert, followed by Deborah Harrison. Yes. <laughs> we are back to three minutes. We are moving on from class sizes. All right. Good evening, trustees and Superintendent Smith. Thank you for your time this evening. My name is Kathy Pinkert, and I'm here to speak as a parent of a player on the Newport Harbor baseball team. My husband, Tim, is the president of the Baseball Boosters. So as a family, we're very invested in this program and have been frustrated by the lack of action from the district when it comes to health, safety, and security of the players on this team. As you know, we are in a very unique situation with the proximity to the ENC which not only poses health and safety concerns, such as uneven outfields with holes, drainage issues, rabbit feces all over the field, fencing sinkage, but it also has a tremendous financial impact. Newport Harbor Baseball has had no major district field renovations in over four decades. Costa Mesa, Estancia, CDM all have had within the last five years. 
As parents, we have to fundraise and spend about fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars per year on items that should be covered by the district. Some of these items include netting, which was paid for by the boosters. All other netting in MMUSD was paid for by the district. Dugout netting, also paid out for um, by the boosters. Grass over seeding, rabbit fencing and installation, machines and equipment. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but we spend $8,000 of parent money on baseballs that get lost into the ENC each year. Um, we also had to install new dugout benches with our own money that were literally falling apart from termites, um, and it, the list goes on. When we put out campaigns to raise funds, the number one question we receive is where does the funding go? Most other athletic programs use booster funding to pay for items outside of the health and safety bucket, such as out-of-town tournaments, extra coaching, and technology. Unfortunately, we are stuck paying for items to try to keep our players safe. I'd also like to bring up security. As you're all aware, we had a break-in of the player uh, clubhouse and locker room earlier this year, resulting in about $20,000 worth of player equipment that was stolen. Our coaches had requested a better door and repair for a really long time, and it was never fixed. Even after the break-in, the door sat broken for several weeks until it finally fell off the hinges, and then it got fixed. From an outsider perspective, that door should have been replaced the day after the break-in occurred. The break-in never would have actually happened had the repair been made when the complaint was initially requested. Over the last three years since our son has been in the program, we've heard a lot of talk but have seen no action. If we don't act now, we're going to be at the exact same spot that we were last year and many years before that at the end of the season next year. We've been told that there's a master plan in place, which is great, but that's many, many years down the road. As boosters, parents, and members of this program, we would like to see a hybrid solution paid for by the district, and we can also get private funding for a hybrid field of um, both sod in the outfield and then turf in the infield. We would also like to see the fences repaired, which we've asked for repairs for a long time because of the safety issues. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. After Deborah is Krista Perez. Hello and good evening. I am Deborah Harrison, the mom of a new and incoming freshman at Newport Harbor High School. I'm here to speak as my son's advocate and will continue to speak as his advocate until he graduates in 2027. It is my passion to stand before you <clears throat> today, not just as a mom of a boy with a dream that is bigger than me, but as a resident of the community to discuss what is important to these kids. I want to talk about three things, three things that you just heard. These things already have heard previously, but as a new parent coming into the Newport Harbor High School, I feel like I've been falsely led to believe that our facilities were just like everyone else's facilities. But now I come to find out that this is incorrect. <clears throat> and with the below issues, it is sheer negligence and laziness that these multiple requests have not been either submitted or approved. The first is safety. We have a multiple of injuries on our fields over the last few months due to erosion, out-of-date facilities, and unlit areas. These have no excuses for the latest, um, for these kids, excuse me. Number two is health and wellness. The poop from the, both the dogs, the bunnies, the geese, um, really carry germs and parasites and bacteria to these young children and actually are causing environmental and pollution in our community. The school states no dogs on campus, but everyone knows that this is the local dog park. Three, security. Many athletes attend the school at early um, in the morning or late at night and <clears throat> Excuse me. I was amazed to find out that my child will be attending a school without gates or lighting or cameras or security guards in some of the most darkest and remote areas on campus where theft and vandalism have occurred. It is our responsibility to keep our kids safe, but also to inspire and create their dreams to come true. Our schools are not just for educational purposes, which I know that this is number one, but it is also to practice a healthy lifestyle, and that has to start today. Thank you.
Good evening. Uh, my name is Krista Perez. Um, you may recall I was here 30 days ago uh, talking about the same subject, the uh, baseball facilities at Newport Harbor High School. Um, I would like to be reporting that um, many, many great things have happened since uh, in the last 30 days, but unfortunately that's not quite the case. I would like to thank um, Trustee Wiegand and Trustee Bartow. Um, after a few days after that meeting, um, they came out along with an assistant superintendent um, and also uh, Lance, who's in charge of maintenance, and we walked the baseball fields and the softball fields together so that they could see firsthand the problems that we're dealing with. Um, I think everybody um, was basically in agreement that we're dealing with substandard facilities. Um, just so that everybody's aware, we understand that these are long-term um, issues and that um, bureaucracy often moves very slowly. Um, but we are dealing with multiple levels um, of issues with the field. There are some, um, what I like to call low-hanging fruit issues that are repairs and immediate <coughs> things that can be done to at least put the fields and the facilities in a safe condition so that the kids can be using it and not worry about being injured. Um, in about five weeks, we have a youth baseball camp program that's gonna be at the school. Uh, so very young kids are gonna be on those fields. Um, they're not aware of the pitfalls, the holes, the fences, all of those things that they're gonna be dealing with. So it is concerning. Um, we also have some short-term um, plans that I think could improve the, the field that we understand will take longer to put in place. Um, some of the other speakers have talked about those, um, improving the outfield, uh, perhaps through new sod, maybe uh, turf through the infield. And then, of course, there's a longer term plan that I know has been discussed about putting um, some major improvements um, in the overall facilities for the school. So we want to be reasonable, but we also need to have action. You know, we had some foul poles installed. Um, that were promised months and months ago, and they were installed after the season was finished. Um, we are approaching summer now. Um, we need to have some of these things taken care of. Baseball players play throughout the summer and in the fall, but it is a, a lower, um, you know, not as uh, busy of a schedule. So now's the time to take care of some of these immediate needs. We have termite damage, um, and then like I said, the field with the holes the rabbits, you know, all the things that you've already heard about. Um, so in, in summary, that's what we would like to request is that there's a comprehensive plan put in place and of, of most urgent need is to deal with the, the facilities as they stand now. We have a temporary fence that showed up the morning that the board members came to walk the field. Um, not sure, it was miraculous that it showed up that day after having not been there for months. Um, but we have a gate that's still not fixed and provides public access. So, thank you. Thank you. Next up is Wendy Lees, followed by Summer Bailey. Good evening, President, President Anderson and Superintendent Smith and trustees. My name is Wendy Lease, and I sat up there, well, sometime it was at Harper, too, for eight years, and also on the Costa Mesa City Council for eight years. I've been a taxpayer. You should put that on the, the thing that we sign in, parent and taxpayer, because some of us raise kids in this district, but they're grown, and thankfully, on their own. I have a solution. I support lowering the class sizes and fixing the baseball field. I mean, one of my sons did play baseball over there. What you can do is take the money that you're using for social emotional learning, SEL, or DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and use that to make, open more classrooms and fix the baseball field. So I appreciate that last year in your budget, the budget priorities, one, two, three, I'm here on more meaningful communicate, more meaningful communicate and engage with constituents. And I am a tax paying constituent, so I'm happy to be here. Uh, this morning I was listening to Dr. Carol Swaim, who's an educator and a legal scholar, and she was talking about how diversity and inclusion of the DEI and the SEL, that they are really going to be in violation of constitutional rights. Because when we, when we lift others up and then we put others down, 
That's in violation of the Constitution. I hope you all have a copy. Mine's kind of worn out, but I use it all the time. Amendment 14 uh, says that the last part of it is that um, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor de deny to any person with its, within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. And I think we need to have a, a, a study session about these controversial, ideological, indoctrination programs that are in violation of other people's rights. And so the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Equal Protection Clause, um, that, that it's going to peg uh, the civil rights of heterosexuals and other groups in favor of minorities. So I hope that in the future, as you listen to the people about the baseball field, over the years, you've listened to them, us about the, the theater at Estancia, the, the football field at Corona Del Mar, uh, Swan Math, Term Limits. It's time to listen to us now. We're part of the community. And the state of Florida just passed a, a, a law to, to outlaw the DEI and the SEL. And so it's, it's happening. And so we need to be with the times. Thank you. Hi, um, hi, board. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, two items. One is just really brief. I wanted to bring everybody's attention to the fact that there's a sustainability decathlon happening in the fall at Orange County Fairgrounds. And it is, it used to be called the Solar Decathlon. It's amazing, incredible. It's a national collegiate competition for engineers and uh, student designers to come up with sustainable ideas. They build many homes. But the reason I'm bringing it to your attention is that there are grants available for um, high school students and high school programs. And I know that October's right around the corner for you guys, but anything you could do to get the word out, um, to get elementary school kids and high school kids excited about the program, I promise you, you wouldn't be um, Sorry that you did. It's really exciting. Um, my name is Summer Bailey. I um, Last time I was here, my daughter won an award at awards night, and that was a long time ago. Um, they my twins graduated from Corona Del Mar, first Lincoln, then CDM, back in 2015. And currently, I am a writing tutor, and I specialize in college essays and college application assistance for kids. And I, I guess it's a good deal that I'm following the nice woman behind um, before me um, because I'm opposed to her position because I think that social emotional learning is something that is absolutely necessary and I say that as someone who sits and has intimate discussions with these precious teenagers who I ask what would you like to write your essay about and I am sad to, uh, to announce that the majority is about social anxiety, bullying, and depression. And uh, I can lead them to presenting their stories in meaningful ways, but why are so many of them having those stories to tell? If we have an opportunity that's evidence-based uh, learning, that's social, emotional, that can help them thrive and succeed um, for being good people, for being kind, for being successful and strong-willed and strong-minded, then Every bit of that effort, I believe, is entirely worth it based on my experience over the last six years meeting all these lovely children. So that's why I came to speak tonight. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. Superintendent's comments. Let's, um, let's start with uh, where, where we just ended up. Um, uh, everyone has an opportunity to come and speak to the board, uh, and, and they're all welcome to do so, whether they're parents or not. But I think what's of interest oftentimes is with those people that are sending their kids to the school, what are those priorities so that you are looking, you say get with the times, we're trying to be current and ask current parents, what is it that 
that you're most concerned about. I thought it was interesting um, during the conversation about class sizes that multiple people talked about the social emotional needs of students post pandemic and that is one of their greatest concerns. I think it's also worth noting that I had my parent advisory committees and these aren't parents that I handpick so it's, it's not a skewed pool um, and their number one concern regardless of their level was the social emotional well-being of their students, number one. And they complimented, when we asked them, what's the thing you're most proud of in the district? That was their first item. And then they went into some other things. Um, we've recently heard uh, from other community members uh, in that regard. And so this seems to be a topic that our parents and, and those folks who have students in our school are guardians. They're really concerned about the wellness of their students and they know the research is very, very clear on Maslow before Bloom, right? That if we don't meet the needs of those students, they're not gonna focus on algebra. They're not gonna focus on these complex formula, right? We've gotta address that first. It's also worth noting that people mention all these things that they don't like. They're not even things we do. Our social emotional learning, we're not putting anyone down to elevate anyone else. We're helping to equip the students with the language and ability to identify how they're showing up so that they can, they can address that, so they can engage the learning. So I can't speak for what other people are doing. We're not putting people down. We're not elevating anyone else above them. We're trying to meet every student where they are, when they're there. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. And it sounds like from parents, we're absolutely on the right track. With regard to baseball, I, I, I bristle a little bit because the suggestion that there's been a lack of activity, uh, it's confusing because I know that we've put a lot of time in recently on this project and we remain committed to it. I know that myself, I, I canceled going to a musical at Ray Elementary so I could meet with Booster parents um, at a last minute meeting before I was going out of town because it's that important to me. Um, and I love musicals, right? I have no musical talent whatsoever, but I really enjoy them. Um, but I wanted to meet with these parents, and then I committed my team the very next week to walking every square inch of both the softball and the baseball diamonds. Um, we're committed to fixing the safety issues now. Now, now in education is the operative word, right? I get that as, as a public education entity, things are slower sometimes than in the private sector just because the government makes us jump through hoops. We've got employees who work their tails off. Um, and, and I think that's worth noting too because I think there were some uh, employee groups that were offended the last time this came up. Um, because I would say that as a district, we didn't give them the tools they needed to do their jobs. Um, and they're committed to doing them. And now the district's committed to giving them the resources they need to better do their jobs. Um, but I can tell you that the safety issues, holes in the field, um, like you say, the, the other things there that are contaminants, district's committed to doing those now. Now, is there a long-term plan for something grander? Sure. And that could take multiple years and we have to find funding and all those things. But the safety issues can be done now and we're committed to doing those. I don't know where that's getting confused. So I just wanna say it again from this dais. We hear you, we're prioritizing this um, and we're committed to doing things now and giving our employees the tools they need now to keep those facilities in good repair. The, the class size issue, I, I certainly appreciate the advocacy there and I've said it before, when our parents uh, don't take the time to advocate for their kids, then the whole system is in trouble. I would add to that that I'm grateful for the teachers that we have in the district. They've sent us messages as well of advocacy around this topic. Uh, the school board has read every single email that's been sent to them. They've read every one of these notices that's been provided, as have my team. Um, we're committed to these conversations, in fact. That's why we've met twice with the teachers, uh, most recently uh, at Kaiser, but we also did the same thing at, at Heights and at Killybrook last year. Remember this conversation was at this same dais last year. So we're committed to having those conversations. We also met with parents um, last week to hear more about their concerns and talk about how we might address this. Um, this. This district has been committed to having some of the best student to adult ratios in the county and they're always in the top three. When you actually look though at student to adult ratios, you find that we do better than most other districts in this county because we don't just look at um, one job alike. The, 
teachers are absolutely important. In fact, research is clear that the most important factor to student outcomes, but there are other things that we avail the classrooms of, like full-time support teachers. Um, and we, we don't just say one size fits all. One of the parents said, you should look at the individual school sites, and we absolutely do. And we've identified, for example, uh, at Kaiser, that they get one and a half FTEs of full-time uh, teacher support, one full-time, one half-time. We look at the psychologists because we know that psychologists are really important to these behavior conundrums post-pandemic. Um, and where we usually have 0 0.4, 0 0.6 worth of psychologist time on a campus, um, that school has 1.2. FTEs or full-time equivalents of psychologists because we realize they, they need some more support. So we're not saying pre-pandemic staffing. We're giving more adults on that campus than we did pre-pandemic, especially when you consider, and it's a, uh, you know, I think the vision of this board to provide more support. We have in, in, in the budget for next year a full-time counselor at every elementary site. Let me just say that again, a full-time counselor at every single elementary site, you do not find that in this county in public education. And those support staff are there to help with these issues specifically. And so again, I compliment the board for that. Um, I think one of the parents mentioned um, curriculum, the fidelity of implementation capacity building of the frontline staff, and I would agree, and I think that's what my staff and I continue to be committed to do, is to make sure that, that we are uh, addressing those things as well, because those are really, really important. And we're not talking about more, we're talking about doing better with what we have uh, and, and investing greater uh, in that capacity and, and the work that's being done there. Uh, we are committed to continuing the conversation um, about where we are and what we're providing. Uh, we'll look as we always do next year at where we are. Some people have said, what if more students come in? Well, then the conversation changes. Um, we know that we're in a state where declining enrollment is the norm um, in California. That's everywhere. Uh, if we have fewer students, then that conversation is a very different conversation. But our commitment is, is to monitor that, to look at each individual site and say, what types of support do they need? To have numbers of adults to student ratios that are better uh, that put us in the top quartile in this county because our kids deserve no less. And uh, I'll end with the importance of teachers because I mentioned that a minute ago. We believe when our teachers are supported by administration through capacity building with the tools they need, that they can meet the needs of the students that have been identified by this board as an appropriate number in a classroom in upper elementary. And I think the research absolutely supports that also. The conversation continues. We're here to work with you. We've been on site because of that. We'll go back to the site and other sites because I heard Harbor, or Heights, I'm sorry. I, I get all the H's confused sometimes. Um, Heights was mentioned, as I said, Killybrook and others. We will be where the conversations are. We will listen and we'll do what we can do to, to provide the best opportunities for our students. Thank you. Number 16, community input on agendized items. Trustee Weigand. This is the opportunity for the public to address the board regarding items on the regular meeting agenda. Comments on agenda items are limited to three minutes per comment, up to 20 minutes per topic. A speaker may not relinquish his or her time to another person. Speaker cards for items on the discussion action calendar may be held until that item is considered by the board if the speaker prefers. We have one from Wendy Lease on item 19A. Would you like to speak now or when we come to the item? Thank you, Madam President. Um, members of the um, trustees, my name is Wendy Lease again. I'm still talking about more meaningfully to two more, two more meaningfully communicate and engage with constituents, including taxpayers. Um, I'm looking for a win-win on what I'm going to talk to you about right now. There are 10 bills in Sacramento dealing with fentanyl. And some of them are moving fast in committees and some of them are stalled and some of them have been thrown out. But I would like to suggest that this is a fine opportunity for you to write a resolution to support any one of these or all of these bills. We know that 
the fentanyl crisis is, is everywhere. I had a student a couple of weeks ago who OD'd and, and came into my class after getting the help. And that it was also in the, the vape thing. And so teenagers, they are, you know, they want to take risks and they don't realize that the fentanyl's in something or the, you know, so it's, I know you're, you're educating, your teachers are educating, but we pay Kevin Gordon as a lobbyist. Uh, let's use him to, to do something we can all agree on, okay? Not just what the, the staff tells you that we need to use Kevin for. For, I know, the basic aid, lobby for that, and financial issues. But, but do something outside the box, okay? Fight for us, fight for the kids. Find whatever legislation, uh, some are Dems, some are Republicans, uh, one is, I know, Shannon Grove, that's SB 237. So support her. It's, it's not, you, you can do it. You don't have to listen to your attorney and the staff all the time. You can think for yourselves and do what's right and represent this whole district. Yes, I rep, I, I'm a parent, I'm a grandparent, but I'm also a taxpayer and I'm old. So I know what... I, I know what's best, and I respect the parents that like the, the SEL and all that, but you got counselors and um, parents. What about parenting? They, they are supposed to help their kids with social-emotional stuff. I did. We all did. I don't think it belongs in the school, but I'm off track. Please, please think about supporting a resolution, not a letter, a, a resolution to Sacramento uh, to the legislators that Newport Mesa Unified School District supports these bills to stop fentanyl from taking our kids' lives. Amen. Thank you. Next up, item number 17, achievement, a report on AVID, Ms. Torres and Mr. Carmona. Yes, at this point in time, I'd like to welcome up Keith Carmona, and he has a presentation and a team he'll be presenting with on AVID. Good evening, President Anderson, trustees, Superintendent Smith, and executive cabinet members. Tonight, I am here to share with you about the AVID program and the wonderful impact that it's having on students at all levels in our school district. AVID stands for Advancement via Individual Determination and is a program that has existed for over 20 years in Newport Mesa. Our goal tonight is to share some specifics about what AVID provides for students, teachers, and our campuses, and then also to hear stories of AVID teachers and a student who have been positively affected by it. AVID's mission is to close the opportunity gap by preparing all students for college and career readiness in a global society. You will hear this evening about how AVID integrates into our schools and supports students from all backgrounds. We also hope that you're able to see that it aims to engage students at high levels and <sighs> seeks to raise the bar in classrooms where it is being utilized. So what exactly is AVID? Is it a class? Is it a set of strategies? Is it a mindset? Can you do AVID without being in or teaching an AVID class? The answer to each of those questions is yes and more. AVID is a research-based college readiness program that can be integrated into elementary, middle, and high school campuses. It has a long track record of preparing students for college eligibility and readiness. We talk a lot about getting high school students A through G ready before graduating from high school. And while AVID helps ensure that, there is also wonderful data to show that AVID students not only are accepted into college at a higher rate than their non-AVID peers, but they actually persist through college and graduate at a higher rate as well. So when we say that AVID is a college readiness program, we are saying that it prepares students not only to get into college, but to be successful through college. So how does it do that? AVID equips teachers and students with highly effective teaching and learning strategies intended to facilitate deep learning, and it layers on to the existing 
instructional programs. AVID's key tenets are that it seeks to set high expectations, engage students in collaborative inquiry-based learning and teach and reinforce very important organizational skills. It is also founded in relationships. Tonight you will hear from our teachers and a student. You will no doubt hear the term AVID family. AVID challenges schools to examine and improve its instruction, leadership, culture, and systems. It is often said that AVID hasn't necessarily invented anything, but instead pulls together the best of what education has to offer and creates a system and a network to actionize the best strategies and approaches for learning. It does that by simultaneously examining both, what students need and what educators do. AVID's been around for 40 years and the role it has played in schools has evolved over time. While it began in one classroom with one teacher as a way to raise the bar and set high expectations for inner city students being transported to an affluent neighborhood in, in San Diego, it has become so much more over time. The original archetype for AVID was a first generation college student. However, today, AVID supports students from across the academic spectrum. A wide variety of students benefit from AVID. Certainly, we do have our first generation college bound students, but other students seek out the program for their organizational support, the college tutors, and some for the network of support they receive from their AVID family. Today, our AVID high school students are enrolled in the most rigorous academic programs our schools have to offer. We wouldn't be able to talk about AVID without mentioning WICKER, an acronym summarizing the main instructional foci of the AVID program. Writing, inquiry, collaboration, organization, and reading. Currently, we have AVID at eight of our schools, Ray Elementary, Costa Mesa Middle and High School, Ensign, T. Winkle, Early College, Estancia, and Newport Harbor. AVID looks differently, different at the elementary and secondary level. For our elementary students and teachers, AVID focuses on utilizing the key research-based tried and true instructional strategies and integrating them into the regular curriculum. At an AVID elementary school, all students are AVID students. Teachers incorporate WICKER into their lessons and students are learning how to learn, how to study, and how to advocate for themselves. This is the beginning of the establishment of that individual determination. There's also the fostering of excitement and awareness of college by introducing students to universities. At this time, I'd like to, for you to hear from a wonderful third grade teacher uh, from Ray Elementary, Nicole Bussell, who is going to share with you a little bit about what's happening there. Um, good evening, thank you for having me. Um, we at Ray were the only Avid Elementary and I just wanted to give you a little peek into what we do there. I'm often asked what, how do you do Avid at an elementary school? because it's not a class. Um, and so as you can see up on the screen, the one on the left, the picture on the left is one of our AVID family nights. We actually have four a year. And many of you have actually been to our AVID family nights. And that one that you see there was our STEM night. We also have AVID in the classroom. This year we had our students and their parents make goals. So they made family goals, school goals, and individual goals. So we're teaching our families how to do that with their children. Um, I remember overhearing two that one of them, their family goal was that they're to see their three children graduate from college. Um, and another family goal they made a different family was to um, buy a house. So, you know, real life goals, and we're teaching them how to do that um, as a family and then as students. Um, the picture on the other side, that those are our AVID presentations. So each classroom has a college and that they represent, and that's a first grade classroom, Ms. Vera's classroom, and they are um, giving a presentation at Flag Deck. So they've researched a college, um, we all do it, and then we give a presentation. You can also see they've done some thinking maps on there, so we're integrating mm -hmm. <laughs> um, everything into the curriculum. Um, and then this was another Avonite, so it was recent, our college um, night. And so all of our classrooms do a college board. Our sixth graders all do their own individual college board. We had Dr. Martinez come and speak and some early college 
um, high school students um, talk to our families. So again, that um, family teaching, teaching our families um, how to go to college and what they need to do to get there. Something new this year that was really exciting is we partnered with Vanguard, um, Vanguard University. And every Friday, we did High Five Friday. And so you can see there the Vanguard dance team is there, and they are welcoming our students on Friday. So every week was a different one. We started out, I think, um, men's baseball came first, kind of scared the kids. They were so loud and excited. And they were just like, what is that? But it was interesting because they expect it every Friday now, and they're looking to see what team is there. And um, the first time that we didn't have a team because it was winter break for the college students, the kids were like, you know, where are they? Why aren't they here? Um, so it's been really a fun thing that we've done every Friday. We also have flag deck on Friday. So uh, two or three of the student athletes will talk to the students and they'll tell them their major and what sport they play and then give them some kind of like, you know, keep in school, stay in school, <laughs> read something exciting. And that has been interesting as well, the Vanguard students. We've had students that have talked for about 10 seconds, and we had one baseball player who talked for three minutes, because yeah. I record them all. So um, it's been really a fun interaction. And then lastly, um, we talked about Wicker. So Avid in the classroom, it provides um, rigor. We do Wicker, the writing um, inquiry collaboration. You see the students collaborating there. Um, organization, when a student starts the AVID program at Ray Elementary in kindergarten, they start with organization note taking in kindergarten. We start that. Um, and then we have the common language that AVID provides through all of the classrooms all the way to sixth grade, where then their note taking turns into Cornell notes, getting them ready for middle school and high school. Um, and then you see we have college day on Friday, so we have we try to get as many students in their college shirts on Fridays. And um, something you can't see in the pictures are the AVID trained teachers and what all that we go through. We go through Summer Institute. Um, our whole staff is trained, so it's not, I know, it's not just you know one class or one, so it's our whole staff that gets trained. And the vertical articulation between the grade levels in ensuring that our students are getting that rigorous curriculum. COVID definitely was a setback for Ray and for our students, but we are on the move and we are back using all of our AVID strategies and we're excited for the future. On Fridays we say, and we really believe, I'm a capable, talented, intelligent shark and I'm going to college and we are getting our students ready for college. So, thank you. As we move up to the middle and high school level, the scope of AVID on a campus grows. Here's where we provide for the AVID elective class, perhaps the piece of AVID that people are most familiar with. The AVID elective class exists for students who have applied for the program, are interviewed, and accepted into the AVID elective. The application process is intended to seek out students who are committed to the rigor that AVID entails. Once in the AVID elective class, students are exposed to an AVID curriculum which directly teaches many of those essential academic skills, such as study techniques, organization, and critical thinking which will help them leverage success in honors and AP classes, and ultimately build success in college and beyond. The AVID elective has a weekly tutorial model where college students serve as mentors and guides in student learning, and our AVID middle and high school students benefit from a multitude of college field trips and guest speakers. In addition to the AVID elective, at the secondary level, similar to how we described Wicker being implemented across the campus in the elementary schools, um, the, we have the inclusion of the robust strategies campus-wide. The vision here is that all students, even those not in the AVID elective, can benefit from great teaching. And there is a benefit for bringing consistency campus-wide. Here is an example of an AVID tutorial. It is worth noting that the college tutor is not teaching the students. Instead, students take turn presenting a single problem they have struggled with and they collaboratively engage in a process of resolving this point of confusion through inquiry. The college tutor helps facilitate the process. This model should simulate what highly effective study groups look like when students get to college. Here are AVID, uh, our Ensign AVID students visiting Cal State Long Beach. Socratic seminar is one of the highly effective uh, classroom routines that AVID promotes. 
Here, students are engaging in collaboration, inquiry, writing, and reading. And continuing with the college going culture, the picture on the left is the hallway, the Avid hallway at T. Winkle, and the students on the right are visiting UCLA. Building the Avid family is crucial, and we take intentional steps to foster that sense of belonging. Now I would like to have you hear from an avid teacher at our secondary level from Newport Harbor High School. Here's avid teacher Jennifer Thompson. Good evening. Thank you for having me this evening to speak about a program that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I have been a teacher at Newport Harbor since the year 2000. And about three years into my teaching career, um, our AVID director, Angela Newman, came to me and asked me if I knew about the AVID program. And to be honest, I didn't really know anything about it. I knew it was at our school, but I just didn't know a lot about it. So she asked if I would go down to San Diego to attend the Summer Institute. And by day two, I was hooked with everything that they were teaching, everything that they were about. It was just, I knew it was an amazing program that I wanted to be a part of. So since 2003, I've been part of the AVID program. Um, we have grown at Newport Harbor tremendously over the last uh, 20 years. Um, at Newport Harbor, we've had AVID for about 27 years. Um, we started one section at each grade level. We've now grown to two sections at each grade level. And next year, we're going to have three sections at a couple of different grade levels. We, it was viewed for a long time as a class for first generation college students or college bound students. Um, some viewed it as, oh, it's just a tutoring class, but it's just way beyond that. Um, we've grown into a diverse student population. We have a large number of students that are actually asking for interviews and coming to us from the public and the private schools, mostly to help transition to high school because it is a smaller setting and we do look after the students greatly. Um, so AVID at Newport Harbor offers obviously that academic support, but we also offer a lot of emotional support. Um, just to give you an idea of what it is structured like at Newport Harbor, um, we do offer in-class tutoring once a week, as Dr. Carmona has said. Um, they work in peer groups, they work with tutors. Most of our tutors come from UCI, Vanguard, and we also have a lot of students that have graduated through our AVID program from Newport Harbor that now come back and offer tutoring as well. While they're either going to college or just settling in, getting a master's degree, um, one of our tutors this year is actually graduating from Cal State Fullerton. We are losing him next year and we are so upset, um, but he will be attending Stanford University to get his master's degree. So we have tutors from all walks of life. Um, we provide them the tools that will help them be successful, not just in high school, but hopefully beyond high school with time management, note-taking skills, um, binder organization. At the junior level, I know that a lot of uh, colleges are not requiring ACT and SAT tests anymore, but we are asking that they do take those tests just in case they wanna go to a school that might want that test. So we do help them at the junior level with that. Um, they also will have their college admission statements written by the time they come to us as um, senior year. Um, I teach the senior level and our goal at the senior level, we call it the three A's. We want you to apply to college, be admitted to college, and then attend that four year college or university. <laughs> so um, we help them at the senior level. It's a very challenging time. The first about two months is filling out college applications, filling out their financial aid documents, making sure all of those are um, done in class. They are not allowed to submit without myself or Laura Barnaby checking them, um, just to make sure there's no mistakes. Um, and then we also provide them a lot of scholarship opportunities. Um, over the years, our AVID students have earned millions of dollars in scholarships. Um, the last five years, we've had five angel scholars. Christian Reyes actually was at our ELAC meeting presenting tonight, which is why he was not here. Um, he is gonna be attending UC Berkeley next year. Um, so we also provide, uh, so provide emotional support. Um, as Dr. Carmona has said, we are a family. Um, the kids know that they can text us at any time on Remind, whether that's a problem they're having at school with a class or a teacher, or even if they just need some support in their home life. Um, some of the students have our cell phone numbers, so we are uh, emotional support for them as well. 
Um, it could be just they're having a bad day and they need somewhere to sit or they just need a break. They need a shoulder to cry on. That happens more than you would know, um, especially when admissions comes out. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, so um, sometimes it's meeting with the parents and being a counselor or just that support or a mediator for them as well. So not only are we there for the students, but we also try to be there as much as we can for the parents as well. Students know that we are always gonna be there to support them, not just at Newport Harbor, but after as well. So we have written, um, for master's programs, we have written letters of recommendation. They come back and ask for financial aid help filling out their financial aid documents as well. So we are really a family in that aspect that they don't graduate and they go away. We are there for them for years to come. Um, the program at Newport Harbor would not be as successful without the support of administration and with the, the support of the staff. Um, we have a number of teachers that have been trained <coughs> in AVID. We have a number of teachers that will come to us and say, I have a freshman that I think is a perfect fit for AVID. And they just didn't know about the program, so they didn't apply. Um, so most of our students, they'll join after those teacher recommendations. And I feel like the staff at Newport Harbor has become an extension of our AVID family. Um, the other thing we have is a tremendous educational foundation at Newport Harbor High School. Um, because of the foundation, we are able to or, uh, provide tutoring for all students at Newport Harbor. Uh, after school till about 4 p.m. on most days, an AVID teacher will stay, and then we have our tutors supporting. Uh, we provide on Tuesday nights, we have Zoom tutoring because we have a lot of student athletes that can't make tutoring because of practices or games, so we offer Zoom tutoring as well. Um, and that's about once a week. It's our one of our math and computer science teachers that logs in and he helps us with that, which is great because I teach social science, not math and science. That's mm -hmm. not my forte. So um, we are able to have that as well. They provide us with field trip opportunities, guest speakers. Uh, the freshman heard a guest speaker today on the um, Holocaust um, and talking about what happened with some of the concentration camps. So I love this program. I think it's great. I think it should be school-wide. I think everyone can benefit from it. I am blessed that I have this extended family and am part of the AVID program. So thank you. Our presentation tonight wouldn't be complete without hearing from one of our AVID students. Earlier this evening, you met Sarita Plata, an AVID senior at Early College High School. She has the unique perspective of having been a part of AVID in elementary, middle, and high school as her journey has led her through Ray, T. Winkle, and Early College. We are proud of Sarita and all of her hard work. She's going to share with you about her journey and what lies ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone. I would like to reintroduce myself. So yes, I am Sarita Plata. I'm currently a senior at Early College High School, and I've been part of AVID for over for seven years. So starting from sixth grade at Ray Elementary all the way to middle school for two years, and then I've been, at, been part of AVID for all four years throughout high school. So I really wanted to share what AVID has really done for me, and I think specifically, you heard more about the technical side, correct? but really more AVID has been a mentality state for me. So I have a specific shirt. I probably should have brought it today, but um, <laughs> on the back of the shirt, it says, we are the future. And I think that AVID really is the epitome of this statement and really motivates it in that I've been able to learn through the tutorials about the importance of collaboration and courage. I don't think I would have been able to speak to here today without the support of AVID and really the support system that it provides. I remember specifically attending one of the Ray um, Elementary AVID nights and that was probably one of the best opportunities I could have ever taken in that I really saw the difference um, seeing it, how much it had changed because of AVID, seeing through the literacy night of how the families were there for them to listen to their children and to listen and support them within their educational journey. And I think that AVID really helped with that. And I think for me personally, I've really been able to stick with AVID and it's been the f support structure for me throughout these four years and that I've been really able to go back to it when things get hard with the academic journey of just college classes and grueling trigonometry class. 
<laughs> I've really been able to go back to AVID and know that there's something there for me because through the tutorials and again with the teachers, it's really about the support system and the AVID family that it does provide in that I can be successful. And going back to the we are the future statement, I think it really does prepare me for that in that I do believe that I am ready for college, that I've gained the necessary skills of the technical skills, but also the soft skills of, again, collaboration and courage and making sure that I can go out to my peers and be able to effectively communicate where I'm confused on a question. And I think this will really translate and hopefully help me in college where I will be attending Harvard next year. And I think it's, I was one of, I'm the first, uh, student to actually be accepted into Harvard at Early College High School. And I know that Early College High School really does focus on AVID. And I think that's just one of the biggest full circle moments to go back and <laughs> realize that AVID really has helped me throughout these four years and really throughout the seven years and that I can go back to it and that it has prepared me well enough for college. Uh, Harvard is lucky to have you. Yes, they are. <clears throat> Earlier tonight, we celebrated our avid eighth grade and senior standouts. These students received scholarships to college. In addition to that, our uh, data is demonstrating that avid works. Uh, recently, our avid seniors have achieved exceptionally high rates of acceptance into college, including at one of our schools, a 100% acceptance rate into four-year university, which is pretty incredible. Uh, you heard a little bit of uh, mention of Summer Institute. Um, all of the work that I've described for you this evening um, takes part or begins each summer with an annual three-day training that our teachers uh, take part in called Summer Institute. During these conferences, our educators become equipped with all the wonderful strategies and approaches. Schools set goals for their program in the coming year. They participate in team bonding. And the highlight of the week is always our inspirational student speaker. Um, it's worth noting that Sarita was selected as the keynote speaker for the annual AVID Summer Conference in Anaheim this summer. Where she, she will be sharing her story in front of thousands of educators, and we invite our board to be there on that day. As we look to continue our AVID journey in Newport Mesa, we will be focusing on supporting the continued growth of AVID at Costa Mesa, who are in the initial stages of bringing back the program to that campus and are doing an excellent job so far. Additionally, we want to continue to capitalize on infusing wicker in classrooms and refining the AVID elective. Lastly, we would love to explore the idea of adding AVID to a number of our elementary school campuses. I would like to end by saying thank you. Thank you for your support of the AVID program and for your interest in hearing more about it tonight. We believe in what it can do for kids and we are pleased to have been able to share it with you this evening. At this point, I'm happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Trustee Weigand. Thank you. That's a really impressive program and really impressive students that are going through the program. And I just, um, last year I was fortunate enough to be able to um, view the the senior uh, presentations and I think that they were just it, it's it's amazing to see what these kids have achieved um, in you know probably six years being in the program um, I hope we get invited to go uh, this year as well I'd love to be invited but that was just my ploy to say please invite us <laughs> they're, they're really uplifting and I and I appreciate listening to our students thank you trustee Barto it's actually it's actually me, if that's okay. Oh, oh okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Move around spots here. Um, two things really quick. I just, I really like on this slide how you said focus on the academic middle. I think we talked about in our meeting last week when you came to CDM. Um, we can't put such an emphasis on AP classes that we leave behind, you know, like the average kid that likes to take a, a regular class. And I really like how that incorporates into this AVID deal. And I think that, you know, you should be able to take a combination of classes and Kids that just want to take regular classes shouldn't be left behind for the AP kids. I know a lot, the majority of kids, I assume, in the district are hybrid. You know, you want to take two APs and two regular classes. And I would just say the two regular classes, it shouldn't be sitting on your phone for an hour and a half. Everything, every period should be challenging. Um, so I really like what you had to present there. Second question is, i just w wondering if there's a plan implemented at CDM because 
I'd love to, I would have loved to be a part of it if, if it was offered. Is there a plan to get that at CDM? Excellent question. As you may have noted, we've kind of grown really slow in our district and we've gone slow and steady and deep. <laughs> so the uh, short answer is not yet. Uh, the long answer is perhaps as we look at data and we determine how many students could be interested in a program like this and if it would fit in something in the model that we have over at CDM, it could be something we could bring there. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, we have our report on secondary curriculum adoptions. Thank you. As I'm not going to touch this. Um, we have our um, regular instructional materials adoptions, and so um, Mr. Carmona is going to briefly explain to you where we're at in our adoption process. Briefly. Good evening once again. Tonight I bring for you consideration for instructional materials to be put on 30-day public display before moving forward with a formal adoption. Our educational services team and committees of secondary teachers engaged in a robust pilot process to arrive at tonight's recommendation. This evening we will be seeking your, your approval for 30-day public display core textbook materials for middle school language arts, middle and high school Spanish and French, and AP Environmental Sciences. We began the process of looking at new materials because the textbooks that our teachers are currently utilizing are outdated and in most cases do not reflect the current state adopted standards. We are in need of textbooks that give our students access to the current state and AP standards and framework and are engaging and up to date. Before making a recommendation to the Board of Education, we engaged in a thorough pilot process to narrow down and ultimately select the best instructional materials for our students. Each of the content areas began by establishing pilot committees at the beginning of the school year. We were careful to ensure that all zones were represented and that we had teachers of students with special needs and English language learners also there to help examine the materials as well. The pilot committee first reviewed a large array of textbooks and narrowed down the options using a rubric that helped root the decision in which texts were best equipped to deliver engaging instruction focusing on the state standards. The process narrowed down the pilot to two textbooks in each area. From there, our pilot teachers each completed a full unit of study from each of the two texts. Before and while our teachers were utilizing the materials, they would meet monthly to review progress and share in their experiences along the way. After having completed both units of study, the pilot committees were brought together to come to consensus on which textbooks to bring forward for board approval this evening. Again, this decision-making process was aimed at selecting the materials that would provide both access to the standards but be engaging for our kids and our special populations. In each of the committees, we reached 100% consensus. Tonight, the text I will be sharing with you are, that are now being recommended for 30-day public display. Pending your approval this evening, and after we collect community input, we will be seeking final approval at the June 20th board meeting. For our middle school English language arts, the pilot committee is recommending StudySync. StudySync is 100% in line with the current California state standards. Our teachers found that it had an excellent integration of reading and writing instruction. There was a strong blend of both contemporary and classic literature and the selections were highly engaging for students. Our teachers commented that the embedded skill lessons to build foundational skills for struggling learners were also strong. This was particularly important for English learners and students with special needs. The text is available in both a physical hard copy and digitally. Visually, it was appealing for students, and overall, our pilot teachers quickly and unanimously favored these materials. On the world languages side, our French teachers unanimously selected Carnegie Publishing. The comments on the screen capture the thoughts of our French teachers. They indicated that the text provided strong contextualized vocabulary development, excellent digital components, abundant cultural lessons, embedded grammar tools to support students, and it has a communicative emphasis with authentic language tasks and allows for strong differentiation. For Spanish, our teachers selected the textbook series from VISTA. 
These committee members commented that it had an excellent progression through the courses and would prepare students for AP. Like the French test, it had robust digital tools such as the ability to record dialogues and give instant feedback. It had student-friendly layout and rich cultural components as well. The process that we engaged in with our AP environmental science teachers was a consolidated version of the process I described before because there are four teachers in the district teaching this course. Environmental science for the AP course, fourth edition, is an updated version of the current textbook. More importantly, the standards for the advanced placement course in text uh, in test recently changed and the current text does not align to the new standards and test. This new version rectifies all of that. Additionally, the text gives practice opportunities for students and is designed to meet the needs of all AP students taking this course. So tonight we are asking the board to consider approving the four textbooks, Study Sync for Middle School ELA, Carnegie for French, Vista for Spanish, and environmental science for the AP course for 30-day public display. Pending your approval, these materials will be on display at the district office in the Sanborn building, and an online form will be available for anyone to provide input or ask questions about these materials. This will be available on the secondary education page of the Newport Mesa district website. There's one additional curriculum update that I would like to provide the board this evening. Our high school science teachers have been engaged in an ongoing pilot process for new materials in biology, chemistry, and physics this year. Um, we have utilized the process I described at the beginning of the presentation to engage with these new materials as well. The committee of science teachers have found the materials that they've been piloting to be of high quality. However, one of the curricula, Open Syed, is not yet complete. Uh, there is an interest in seeing that these materials in full before making a final decision about which one we would recommend to the board. For that reason, we have decided to extend the pilot period into the coming school year. Our schools will continue to evaluate the effectiveness of these materials, and we expect to bring a recommendation to the board for new instructional materials in bio, physics, and chemistry during the 23-24 school year. Thank you very much for your continued support of our teachers. Happy to take any questions. Any questions? Oh yes, Trustee Crane. I just have a quick one. Where did you say parents and the public can access the information digitally? So uh, for the for review? the text, yeah, for the so review, th it's available um, in the Sandboard Building to come in and, and be able to look at the hard copies. We can look at also putting it online. Okay, I thought you had said there was a digital. Um, There's a digital component uh, for the students to access when we oh. formally put it in classes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next up are informational items, legislative and state budget items. Trustee Barto and Trustee Murphy, who would like to go first? We're, we're negotiating who's going first. Um, I, I'm going to let Trustee Murphy close it up because mine are quick. Um, we saw our version of the May revised budget, and um, it's making everyone scratch their heads a little bit mm -hmm. as to what we're going to do um, next year. Um, the instructional materials arts block grant was uh, something we anticipated getting a big cut out of it, and it did. Um, how that plays out for our district uh, remains to be seen, and I know there's a lot of advocacy through CSBA at the local level to kind of uh, work on maintaining our funding. Um, additionally, not something that CSBA has taken a position on, but something that I've heard about from many, many um, trustees around Orange County um, and around California is that they are hoping for um, CSBA in general, but um, all of the school districts to take a position on the uh, bill supporting uh, testing for dyslexia at uh, school entry. So I will have an update on that. Um, CSBA has their delegate assembly this weekend. I'm sure that that will come up as a topic, so I'll have more to report um, as well, and then um, be able to speak to the nuances of what that um, supporting that dyslexia bill um, would entail, where the support is, all the details related to that. 
And um, mine is also very short. Just quickly, uh, we got uh, the pleasure of meeting with Assistant Secretary of Education Roberto Rodriguez while we were in uh, Washington, D.C. for the CSBA Coast to Coast trip. Um, that was great. Uh, we got to, he's the Assistant Secretary of Planning, Evaluation, and Policy Development, so that uh, felt um Timely, <laughs> and um, he uh, was great, and we got to talk about how um, next time around, I want to see in the infrastructure bill funding for infrastructure for schools. How about infrastructure funding for schools? So we we got to advocate for that for a little bit. Um, I think, given our previous guests who who left, they would agree with me. We need more infrastructure funding for schools. Uh, we also certainly talked about um, needing uh, federal funding for special education, which has always been an issue, continues unfortunately to be an issue and uh, something I will happily talk to any assistant secretary of education about anytime they want to. So um, it was great. It was a great lunch and uh, we appreciate the time. So thank you for helping to set that up, Superintendent. All right. Next up is our consent calendar. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Wigan, seconded by Trustee Crane. We'll call a vote. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Crane? Yes. Trustee Wigan? Yes. Trustee Pearson? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Ursoilu? Yes. Trustee Barto? Yes. Okay, and next is our resolution adoption calendar. Adopt resolution number 240523, recognizing Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I skipped 21A. <laughs> Approve middle school English language arts textbook for public display. Do I have a motion? So moved. I second. Uh, moved by Trustee Crane, seconded by Trustee Pearson. We'll call vote. Student board member TJ Rocos? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Crane? Yes. Trustee Wigan? Yes. Trustee Pearson? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Ursoilu? Yes. Trustee Barto? Yes. Okay, 21B, approved secondary science textbook for public display. Do I have a motion? A motion. Second. Moved by Trustee Murphy, seconded by Trustee Crane. Roll call vote. Student board member TJ Rocos? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Crane? Yes. Trustee Wigand? Yes. Trustee Pearson? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Ursoilu? Yes. Trustee Barto? Yes. 21C, approved secondary world language textbook for public display. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Trustee Wigand, seconded by Trustee Murphy. Roll call vote. Student board member TJ <coughs> Rocco? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Crane? Yes. Trustee Wigand? Yes. Trustee Pearson? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yep. Trustee Ursoilu? Yep. Trustee Barto? Yes. And now we're really ready for number 22. Resolution <laughs> adoption calendar. A, adopt resolution number 240523, recognizing May 21 to 27, 2023, as classified employee week. Do I have a motion? <coughs> so moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Crane, seconded by Trustee Murphy. Roll call vote. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Crane? Yes. Trust <coughs> Trustee Wigand? Yes. Trustee Pearson? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Ursoilu? Yes. Trustee Barto? Yes. Um, B is adopt resolution number 250523 to apply for California Schools Healthy Air, Plumbing, and Efficiency Program, Cal Shape the cow shape grant. Do I have a motion? Yes. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Trustee Crane, seconded by Trustee Murphy. Roll call vote. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Trustee Crane? Yes. Trustee Wigand? Yes. Trustee Pearson? Yes. Trustee Murphy? Yes. Trustee Ursoilu? Yes. Trustee Barto? Yes. Number 23, informal reports. Superintendent? So able to talk a bit about the advisory uh, councils, so we'll leave that at that. Got a chance to go see Mama Mia at Newport Harbor High School. Um, again, 
I love a good musical. <laughs> but but, but, but I, I share that tonight because they had this breakdown. The, the system that's scheduled to be replaced uh, <laughs> broke down. Uh, and the lights couldn't be controlled. So the room was dark. Uh, and they're trying to figure out how, how to fix it. And they had people in the audience who know a little bit about this and that. And after an hour, they're finally able to turn on the lights and go house lights only. Now, if, if you've ever done theater, you know how difficult that is to go from ready to go, two songs, a break for an hour. Now the high sl or, uh, house lights are up. The kids were so courageous. They were so awesome. They prefer, I mean, they just performed magnificently. Um, but, but here's the other part, and I want to compliment our team. The very next day, Lance and the team had um, someone over in the morning to fix that system so they could run a matinee and the last show with a full curtain call, lights working and everything that day. So kudos, Jeff, to you and the team uh, on a weekend, getting folks over there to get that set up so our kids could perform form as intended. Um, I, I wanted to say the Newport Mesa Schools Foundation had a chance to, to attend that as well. Um, what a measure of generosity to provide um, some support for innovative classroom ideas and, and supplies, etc. I want to compliment our school board for um, sponsoring um, one of those foundation grants as well. And, uh, I told Julie that the superintendent needs to follow suit. Um, <laughs> she's probably listening right now, throwing something at the TV. No! But uh, I, we're going to follow your lead and do that next year. And, and then had a chance to go to the Early College High School Science Symposium. And we've, we've heard from some of those students tonight how impressive that was. Um, again, the students mustering up the courage to present in front of a bunch of adults they don't know. And, and it was even worse for me because I was wearing my suit. So they thought I was a judge. And they kept saying, how would I do? And I'm like, I'm not a judge. They're like, oh, man, because they were all into it. Uh, but they're doing great work over there, and it was just inspirational to be there. Uh, last thing, um, the board had, uh, from the day, has talked about investigating uh, some of the emails we got in the CPRA to make sure that there wasn't staff overreach or to determine if there was. In fact, um, we've completed that investigation. A third party did it on our behalf. They found no staff overreach. Uh, what they found was that a single administrator used language that was not consistent with district expectations or practices. Uh, that employee is no longer with us. Uh, the resolution per the investigation is that we more clearly articulate our practice and we better train our team. We are uh, better articulating our practice in writing right now and we have scheduled training to resolve this matter. Thank you. This time I will take volunteers rather than going down the line. Who wants to go first to do their, soup, their board member report? Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll take it for the team. Always the first volunteer. <laughs> Helium hand. Um, all right, well, first a, a huge applause to our uh, tech team. Awesome IT, Genith, EdTech, Tosas, along with our Annette, Franco, and PIO team for the new website that they just launched. And it was absolutely seamless on our end. I'm not sure how <laughs> the troubleshooting on your end, but thank you. Apparently, a little trivia here. The website, our NMUSD website, has 380 pages that needed to be, um, so yeah. Amazing, so now they're working on the school sites uh, pages, but thank you so much for all the work, all of the, the um, behind the scenes work, appreciate it. Um, we, uh, we have Trustee Anderson, Murphy and I attended the Let's Be Kind Gala, which is, uh, was amazing at Costa Mesa High School. Uh, I, intended, I attended the CTE stakeholder engagement meeting, which was held at Costa Mesa High School. That was absolutely amazing to hear the report and to understand how much we impact the, our kids and the pathways that they choose um, that we offer them. And, and I know that we're on a growth pattern, so that's wonderful. Thank you to um, Keith Carmona and Lisa Snowden who are there presenting and the team, of course. Uh, East, uh, my um, elementary school uh, 
that I represent, East Wolf Elementary, is getting ready for the production of Little Mermaid. They're very excited. Uh, attended the PTA meeting um, last two weeks ago, and the East Bluff PTA is very grateful for the collaboration in regarding to the renovation of the NPR and the support that the district has provided. They were extremely grateful. Thank you very much for that. Uh, CDM, my gosh, there's everything going on from performances, dance, theater, uh, CIF, uh, prelims, finals, et cetera. Senior projects are happening next week, which is huge. That's an exit project for our seniors, very big deal. Also keeps them on task till they graduate. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> TJ. <laughs> um, it's, it's a bit bittersweet to think that by our next meeting um, on the 13th, we will have our student board members uh, graduate except for Marcelina. So, wow, amazing. Very impressive, and we're very proud. Thank you. I'll go next. Um, I want to say thank you to the Harbor Council PTA for the PTA luncheon. That was wonderful, and it was great to you know be a part with um, a lot of the different volunteers from different schools and the principals. That was wonderful, and to hear about you know see how many people have won and the impact they're making at their school. So thank you for putting that on. Um, the the I, I went today something that really kind of really impactful as my on my time as a school board member was I went to the back bay interviews their senior interviews and it was um just eye-opening to see the different journeys that all of our students have taken um and to graduate but they all were very proud of themselves for graduating and i was very um just very impressed with their um their maturity and uh, things that they've learned in life. I probably <laughs> spent 40 years trying to learn. Um, so it was it, it, it just amazing. And one thing that they did say about Back Bay is there's a renewed sense of energy um, and renewed sense of purpose with everyone at that school. And that was just so heartwarming. And I'll have to say it's one of my top top five things I've, I've done as, as a school board member. So um, just gr great, great. Um, Great programs we're running. Um, and then I did spend four wonderful days watching a, a elementary musical called Willy Wonka. It's great. Four days? <laughs> Oof. Well, and then the, the fourth day, the smoke alarm went off. So that was. <laughs> did you pull that? One? Yeah. It was, I know. I might have I pulled that. Uh, but it was wonderful. <laughs> it, I mean, there's so much effort from everyone around, <laughs> including my daughter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Trustee Crane and I um, visited Newport Coast Elementary and got to spend some time with the new principal there, um, Heather Darrow, and um, it was a great visit. Of course, Newport Coast did the Newport Coast way of, of welcoming her with <laughs> balloons and parties and sandwiches, <laughs> and um, it's, she's going to be a very um, incredible asset to that school. Um, she's going to bring great energy and a lot of knowledge of, of the curriculum. Um, she lit up when you, you talked about writing, and I, I think as parents, mm -hmm. we all want our kids to write, um, and that is what um, she is going to bring to that school, and I think she's going to be a, an incredible asset to that. Um, another great event that I went to this uh, month was the Arbor Day event. Um, I guess every year a different elementary school gets to plant trees and it was Anderson's turn this year um, and it was amazing. Um, it was super fun, probably one of my favorite events to see and I think one of the parents there had planted trees 30 years ago and their trees were still oh. there um, in the park. So that was super cool. Now their child was planting trees. Um, so great tradition, great thing that our city does um, and, and that was wonderful. I've enjoyed going to CIF games, not so much the volleyball <laughs> one, um, <laughs> but because <laughs> TJ was uh, gone. Congratulations to Newport Harbor. Um, it was a great game. It was great to see how many people traveled to Cerritos to that game. Um, it, it's amazing. We live in a great, great community and a great school district for to have that whole gym filled um, with fans. It was fantastic. And um, I, I'll sit through award banquets all night long. It's yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite things. Like like today, I teared up um, tonight. It was amazing kids, amazing schools, and this is what 
what we're here for, and it's great, great to celebrate. We found the tissue. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yes, uh, obviously, uh, Trustee uh, Barto and President Anderson and I went to Washington D.C. I could make a funny about that. We laughed about it a few times. Yes. <laughs> I can. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What What happens when a Republican, a Democrat, and an Independent go to D.C.? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> um, it was actually it was, we had a blast. <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I actually, I only really bring that up just from the standpoint of, you know, with all everything in the news, um, it's, uh, and, and you certainly hear how people have tough conversations that aren't pleasant, and I feel like that um, we had great conversations that were really pleasant and um, and, and a some tough ones that and were pleasant and, too. Yeah, yeah, and some tough and you can have Civil tough discourse. Yeah, you can have tough conversations that are very pleasant and um, and know when you're coming from the place of you want the best for the kids and you and you all agree on on that as your driving force. Uh, you can kind of agree on almost anything, so um, or find a way into that middle, and so that was great. We had a we had a really good time. Um, I will do that with you two lovely ladies anytime too. Um, also uh, at Costa Mesa, lots of good things going on. I got to go to the best of the best event on um, what was it last night? Two nights ago, <laughs> and, it all, and all stri um, there's a lot of best of the best out there right now. Um, so that was so exciting to see the whole stage of the Performing Arts Center filled with students getting awards for all of their hard work in everything from um, you know the performing arts to math, science, you know language arts, the the whole the whole shebang, yoga even. So um, that was that was super great. Um, so proud of our teachers um, and our staff who really, you can see how hard they work to make um, our lives, um, to make the lives better for these students and to really um, applaud their, their successes and, and support them in their endeavors. So that was great. And um, I'll, I'll just mention it because I got to go. Kaiser's Carnival, it's the best event in the district, I can say. <laughs> Um, those fields are amazing. There's so many things you can stick out there in those fields for kids to do. Um, so the Kaiser PFO pulled that off again beautifully. So kudos to them. Um, thanks for the community for coming out and enjoying that, supporting our schools. Um, we also uh, was we were able to go to the CSBA reception uh, with Senator Newman. Um, Trustee Barto, Trustee Crane, and I were able to do that. Um, we got to hear directly from the senator, who's the chair of the Education Committee. Um, so that was helpful. He's got a couple of bills I know that we're in support of. So it was good to be there and support him um, on that. Um, the, the one little thing, I guess, that wasn't as fun, but I applaud Dr. Potnas and Dr. Kwong so much for taking this on. Um, they hosted an, an appropriate language event at Costa Mesa, and um, there was a, a good group of parents that showed up and had that kind of, again, tough conversation, but, um, um, but it was great to hear uh, Parents of all, uh, you know, from from all over, talk about how hard it is to have conversations about race, about uh, ethnicity, about whatever, even as adults. And so we understand that it's hard as students and as kids. And um, certainly, as we all heard coming out of COVID, I think some of some of our boundaries on, you know, <laughs> what's appropriate, what's inappropriate, might be it might be a little skewed. I don't know that YouTube really shines in that in that <laughs> light um, in talk? terms of teaching the best of the best, but. Um, but uh, they took it on, and uh, again, our principals um, and our teachers are brave, and I appreciate everything that they do um, to try to make life better for our kids um, in this, as we've all heard, post-COVID time that we're all still trying to get through. So um, we will do it together, and, and that's, that's, the, that's the best part about it. So that's it. Um, I just want to thank um, our board and Dr. Smith um, for honoring our commitment to students and parents and 
um, going through the trouble of go, even doing a third party investigation. It's great to see um, that we take that so seriously. And it's also great to see um, that we, you know, we have ways to improve, but we're, we're, we're working on it and we can always do better. But, um, but we take that seriously. And thank you for considering the um, uh, policy on parental engagement because I think it really just highlights so much of what we have already do and have been doing. So I appreciate that and look forward to seeing that in a couple meetings when it comes through. Um, I have been running around too with everyone else. Um, <laughs> been, I appreciate the Harbor Council PTA and their honorary service awards. Um, I really love doing the back base senior interviews. Um, some really um, tough places that our students have been through, um, through no fault of their own in many cases and their resilience. Um, and, and so many of them were kind of, you know, having a hard time as to whether they would even graduate and to whether they'd even show up for their senior interviews. And it was a big, uh, so exciting for our principals and staff that they did come because they had been kind of like, oh, am I even gonna make it? Do I believe in myself? So the belief of the um, back base staff kind of holding their hands and pushing them through. And um, so many of them said, oh, I'm no good at school. And they were just beautiful writers, you know, just the, the, the emotion that they were able to convey in their, their paragraphs. So I'm like, you may not think you're good at school, but you're actually an excellent writer. Like, don't give that up. Um, it was really cool to see. Also saw Mama Mia, no technical difficulties <laughs> <laughs> when I saw it. Um, and uh, CIF volleyball, you know, I really wanted to go five five rounds anyway. It was, but you guys, both teams played so great. <laughs> Be kind. Um, uh, we went to the DAR Citizenship Awards. We have some really amazing um, students, and it was great to see all of our schools so well represented from junior high through high school, both for being um, good citizens, being um, good. Um, good writers for their engagement and volunteerism. Uh, I also did not go to the Let's Be Kind event, but I sent my board designee, my daughter. Right, yeah. um, she needed some service hours, and she's like, did you go so that, did I go so you didn't have to go? I'm like, no, I was at another event fundraiser, so thank you for going, but she, she doesn't believe me. She thinks that she was sent as a designee, so we'll let her think that. <laughs> um, and I'm really looking forward to ACE Day. Um, and working with, uh, I get to be with the IT staff, so I promise to be a good listener and observe, and I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> okay. Um, well, as mentioned earlier, I went to the Ray College Night, which was really incredible. Um, it, the students get to study one specific school and put together a massive report on it and learn all about schools that are completely out of their area that they've never learned about before. Um, and it was really cool to also see um, the, the teachers that were able to congratulate the early college students that they had had when they were in elementary school. It was really a heartwarming uh, moment. Um, I was also excited to um, see the Teachers of the Year receive their awards. I'm glad they were able to come here as well um, for their amazing work. I know Michael, for several years, has just done an incredible job at Ensign in particular of having his classroom be the safest space on campus for anyone. Um, and so he teaches special ed, but anyone's allowed to go in there if they want to. And I think that's just incredible. Um, I was also able to attend with Trustee Crane, the Arts Commission, on Friday night. Um, the date was changed to a Friday night. It was not as well Sorry. attended as sometimes. <laughs> um, but it was just lovely to see the momentum. And really, um, I got to sit at the table with uh, visual art teachers from uh, T. Winkle, Corona Del Mar, and Newport Harbor. And just the ability that we were able to contribute, like, maybe you, we can help you buy paintbrushes. Like they just, they've gotten used to not asking and I'm like, we have money to, to pay for supplies, you don't have to do it. And so um, it's just kind of those real opportunities and being face to face with teachers, I think those things always come up. Um, I was able to attend a city council meeting for Costa Mesa on um, a couple of topics. I was just there to listen and I was really heartened to see a Victoria Elementary student who was in fourth grade come to the city council meeting and advocate for himself. Um, it was really delightful and amazing and surprising. Um, so he, there's the Harbor Soaring Club that has 
he, they yes. want to allow oh, the airplanes at Fairview Park. park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really lovely. Um, and then we finished up the um, the bike to school days. And then also on May 27th is Walk and Roller Festival at Estancia at 10 a.m. Um, and then tomorrow night is the Les Miller Awards for students in Costa Mesa who are high achievers. And so I think a lot of us will be there for that. That's it. All right, it is 8.54 and we will adjourn our meeting.